Right, do me a favor, Salaki. Can you check on um, that? Is actually no, no, I can check on this. Don't worry. If you want me, sure. Make sure that. Oh shit! Let me make sure that it's not set up with my um my earphones. Is it running? Yeah. Shut my earphones off. Okay, good. Alright, All right, shut the warm, shut the warm. First, I'd like to give all praises. Come in, all praises onto your hour, uh, Shabby Hawa Shai, Wahala Khan Ash, double honors onto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that taught us well, that taught us this truth, man. You know, it's ministry. And um, honestly, brothers out there all over the world on the highways and the byways teaching this word in their sincerity and in truth. Um, and, um, you know, what I want to talk about today is. You know, the, you, you got this the Christianity, right? Which is one of the, the main major ops, the major opponents of the true gospel, which is in your house. Yeah. You know, and um, it's not been questioned. You know, and this this is this is um where we come in because you know we uncovering the lies and the falsehoods that Christianity pushes, and show that actually, you know, the the things that they teach or the doctrines that they're promoting. In, on the pulpit is not really biblical. It's not really in line with the narrative of the Bible because the Bible, like any story, because it's a story, it's a real life story. Every story has a narrative, a plot, a narrative. All right. Christianity doesn't really fit into the narrative of the Bible if you actually read it. So, an example of that is um, I was embarking the other day, and they're always there, man. These these are uh, Christian crusaders, man. They're out there trying to win souls to Christ. And they're always talking about, you know, God loves everyone and he wants you to repent to save you from hell. Right? And if you want to go to heaven. So a big part of the Christian narrative, I think, I don't know if you would agree with me, is the idea of going to hell or going to heaven. That's a big part of the Christian narrative. They, that's what they run with. Do you want to go to heaven? Do you want to go to hell? But the problem is, is that when you actually go into the scriptures and you read through the law and the prophets, the idea of going to hell as, a, as the ultimate punishment for transgression or going to heaven as the ultimate reward for being good, so to speak, it's not really a narrative that we see in, 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 in the Torah or in the, the prophets, in the Psalms. It's not, it really doesn't exist. So where, where did this narrative come from? Now, ultimately, the ideology of the afterlife really goes back to the heathen. When you go into the Egyptian book of the dead, you know, the, the book of the dead, um, you got the... Uh, was supposedly a cheat code for the afterlife because you could eat if you you had to pass this test in the afterlife and then if you pass the test you could go to what they would call the egyptian heaven if you fail the test you go into torment which is the egyptian hell same thing when you go into uh, uh greek mythology you have the afterlife you have to you have to you know all this madness you know you got to cross this lake you got to give the boat man a coin. So when they used to bury their dead, they, they would make sure they bury their dead with coins on their eyes or in their mouth. A coin in their mouth or two coins on the eyes. And that would, would be to give to the boat man. This is vanity. And then the boat man would take you across the river. And if you were good, then you go to what they, the different realms of heaven, like the Ecclesian fields and all this shit. And if you've been bad, then you go to Hades and the different realms of Hades and the different tournaments. So all Christianity did was incorporate these pagan doctrines into the Bible. 
But if we go back to Genesis, let's do that. Let's go to Genesis and we read about Adam, okay? Genesis, I'm going to start from three, I'm going to start from seven. And the eyes, I mean, I'm going to start from eight. And they heard the voice. Because, you know what? Read up from the top. Because this is going back, back to the beginning. Okay. Uh, Genesis 3, I'm starting from the top. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Now we know that the, the serpent represented a man, a, 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 a subtile man, a deceiver, a manipulator, right? And we know that that same old serpent is back here today. That's why in the Revelations, it speaks about that old serpent, that dragon, which is Satan. That's talking about the so-called white man, Esau Eden, beginning with their elites. They are that serpent, that subtile one, that, manip that, that master manipulator. Okay? Because that's what Esau is good at. Esau is good at uh, psychological subversion and manipulation. Telling half-truths. But the, that's um. There's a difference between outright, uh, um, what's it to like? There's there's a form of deception where you use the truth to deceive. It's, they do it all the time. It's like you, you on 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 um in their politics, you can take a statistic and take it out of context and use it to manipulate the people. But if you if you put that statistic into context, it will be like oh that's that's not even significant. They do it all the, on, the, on the news all the time. They can take a statistic and make it look like it's the, the worst thing ever. But then if you put that into context with something else, it's like, oh, it's not really an issue. So Esau knows how to tell half-truths or use different things to deceive and manipulate the people. They do it all the time. That's their power. <laughs> you know, they're, they're really good at it. Right? That's the same serpent back then. This is what he did to Eve. Right, they know they know how to play on your weaknesses and your 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 desires and use them against you. That's how they get these goofy niggas in the in the entertainment industry to sell their soul because they they know what they want, they know what they desire, and they use a way to manipulate them to get what they want. But in the end, them entertainers never really truly get what they want, and then they get they, they get taken out. Go on. Uh, which the Lord most high had made, and he said unto the woman, Yeah, as, ye, as most high said, ye Listen, should. Man, let me say this. Ain't no woman going to talk to a fucking talking snake, man. Anyone that's got daughters or got a woman. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> Can you imagine, brother? <laughs> imagine that like, your woman's just in the yard, like, and a snake just roll up in the yard, period. Let alone the snakes start talking. You know how mad that would be, but the screams will be heard on the, on in, in, on the other side of the earth. You know how mad it gets in my house when there's even a spider. <laughs> nah, it's, it's not an actual serpent. It was a man, a deceiver. Yeah, go on. Okay, is that the question? No. Okay, good. Go on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. It's a book of Psalms. 58 and 3, I say, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Yeah, you see that. Listen, man, these devils, man, like, like, look at them Israeli ambassadors, bro. Them man are expert, yeah, at dodging and, 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 and gaslighting and twisting and turning all over the news. Like, they, they, get, they get hit with facts, yeah, and they just do no reverse and 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 full counter, you know what I'm saying? They're moving like my man, my man from from the deadly sins. You can't. You you trying to tie these man down? They will manipulate and switch this up, and have you looking like the bad guy. And they're like you you got them banged to rights. This, this devil is is exceptionally well uh, equipped with the art of 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 skullduggery and lie and lies and mischief. They've got it down to a T. They know how to manipulate your emotions. They do it all the time. They got it down to a science. <laughs> Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the death father 
that stupid no he are, are here because you really can't you can't reason with a man that's basically only motivated by their their um their their lusts and their desires there's no you can't mo you can't re you can only reason with a man that can be reasoned with because that man is willing to basically subdue his desire or subdue his lust and let let um let his let let something else take precedence. Esau Edom is a man that only cares about his lust. He don't care about truth. He don't care about uh uh um. He don't, he don't care. Look, if you got a piece of land and he wants that land, there's nothing you're gonna tell him or or work out that's gonna change the fact that he wants that land and he's gonna fulfill that lust. So all that talking and negotiating ain't gonna get you nowhere because at the end of the day, he. Is got a, his mind is fully focused on fulfilling his lust. You can't reason with a man like that. Covetous man, you can't reason with a man like that because in his mind, my goal is to is to to satiate my lust, and that's what's going to happen. When man, when they have a blood lust, if they want to kill you, there's no negotiating because they want your blood. There's no negotiating, and and you could you could say something that can. Uh, uh, like when they used to catch Jake with a lot of these um, lynchings, the Jake they caught weren't even the Jake that did it. They don't want to hear that. Yo, yo, like, you, know, you ready? Okay, yeah. Certain times it's like, if they would just wait for reason and be like, hold on, nah, this man, this man ain't even got the right color hair. He ain't even, the, man, shut up. They might not want to hear that because they've already got it in their mind. Listen, I'm getting blood today. So it doesn't matter what the truth is. That happened in so many lynches. Man was innocent. And, and, and the evidence was there to be like, they don't want to hear no evidence. The evidence is going to get in the way of their lust. So they can't be reasoned with. They're going to be deaf to it. Vocab Malone and all these guys, you think they really care what the truth of the Bible is? Do you really think that? You think Vocab Malone and these goofy Christians care about the truth that is in the Bible? No, they care about what their lust is, which is within them, what they want, their agenda. So it doesn't matter what you say to them or what proof you provide them, they will never let that proof or that evidence get in the way of how they feel and what they want to achieve. Which is why for years, we're going backward and forward with, with vocab Malone. And how many times when we've got him dead to rights on the scriptures, has he said, you know what, you're right he ain't. Even if we're right, he gonna, we're going to be wrong. Because he's not entering into the discourse. What's the, what's the word? What's the word when, when you're not entering into a negotiation? Uh, um, faithfully. You know when, you're not, when, you, when you, you, you entered into a negotiation, but you never had no intention to negotiate? You've not entered in with good faith. What do they call it? Good faith? Yeah, you've not, you've not, yeah, he's not entering into the debate with good faith. He's not entering into the debate with the thought process of let the truth reign. Whatever the truth of the debate is, let that be the winner. There's no intention. He's got no intention of anything we say being true. As far as he thinks in his mind, listen, I'm, I'm a so called white. You're just a Negro. Shut the hell up here. Be what I tell you to be. Do what I tell you to do. And just be glad that I'm allowing you to do that. That's his mindset and his intention. He's not thinking there could be possibly something we say that, that he could... Okay, that's true. No. Look, just look at it. Over the years, how many times we've disproved this man from the scriptures and he's just ignored it completely. That's what it's talking about when it says he's as the deaf Adam. The man can't be reasoned. You can't reason with a man that that his his ultimate. When it all is said and done, it's all about his lust. He, there's nothing which is above him. But you can reason with a man that respects the truth, because even when what he believes isn't true, he'll be like, you know what? But I respect the truth more than myself, so I'm gonna let the truth stand. A guy that only is within himself. You can't reason with that man. You're arguing for no reason with that man. This, you can see it. Exactly what the scripture says. <laughs> That's why he just needs to be subdued 
in a physical manner. Yahweh Shai ain't coming back to debate him and sitting down with the scriptures and say, go backward and forward. He coming with the iron rod. That's the only thing they're going to understand. They're not going to understand reason. Oh, yeah, so the scripture says this. And then he's just going to go, oh, yeah, you know what? You're right on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't care about what's right. It's not about what's right. It's just about me, you know. I want to, that's a spoiled child, you know? Yeah, it's about my young child. You going to hook this up? Yeah, yeah, you have to probably switch the camera over. Uh, Let me take it out. Are you going to do you recording? Yeah, 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 yeah. The technology. It's like your arcade. into a debate or any kind of negotiation with a guy that has no intention of accepting if he's wrong so, and don't care right we're, we're reasonable men we will do we will go into the scriptures and see whatever the scriptures say what did um, Apostle Sahar said when, um, when that polite came to the camp he said if it's in the scriptures that's the way we need to operate Someone comes to you and it's in the scriptures and it's the truth of the scriptures. Uh, a sincere person will go with what the scripture says and not go with your own emotion or your own narrative or your own agenda that you had already. That's called being sincere. Huh? Uh, just twist the truth. Trying to twist your, the truth for your own, for your to, own means. To, to your own uh, flesh, your own belly. You know, that's not what this thing is all about. Let the truth stand. Go on, carry on up. Yeah. Well, no, was you finished the song? Yeah, yeah. Hey, these man, listen, this, yeah, man. Hey, this guy, this guy, Volcan Malone, is so disingenuous and so, so lacking in faith to towards the truth that he came out when that when the whole October seventh thing came out. The three live streams, um, basically with with different Israelis, like promoting it and 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 you know, uh, uh, justifying it. And then since then, over twenty thousand people have been killed. Like, and I think they said like 60 or 80% of that is children. And the man is quiet. All of his videos has, have still been about us. He ain't said that. It shows you the man got no. Well, it's something very The biggest problem is that the so called black people. So it's all kind of. All kind of just on that. But these people have killed thousands of people, children, children of God, according to him. Because it's us. Are we not all God's creatures? <laughs> we'll keep everybody, right? Yeah, but he don't give a damn about them. He don't care. So that shows you he's not he's not sincere when he talks about love and he, how much he, he 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 cherishes life. That's just what he uses to oh, attack man. us. Because again, what's another scripture say? The old serpent, that devil, which is Satan. What does the word Satan mean? It means adversary. What's an adversary? Someone who is against. And at the end of the day, when someone is a Satan to you, it doesn't matter what stance you take. It's, it's they're going to take the counter stance. <laughs> yeah, but it's, yeah, it's, it's like politics. Yeah, yeah, like yeah they do the same thing. They just argue. They just the same arguments over and over again. If one man says one thing, they'll just say the opposite. The opposite. And even if, it's good, even if that's what they say next year, they'll, yeah. they'll, then the other but they don't want you to win and have a good point. That's just, you ever met a man that's just against everything you say? That's an adversary. This is totally against you. You can say that like the sun is yellow, a man will find a way to turn that into oh, an see. argument. Actually, no, technically, it's, you <laughs> say, yo, brother, come on, dog. Yeah, because that's what the word Satan means. It means an adversary. And that's what Esau Edom is to us. He's an adversary, man. Volcab Malone is an adversary. It doesn't matter what we say, he's going to come out against us until we completely just dissolve and be whatever he wants to be. This is what I'm saying, we can go and find every excuse. Yeah. You know, and it's like Cain. Cain made the same way. When the Lord asked him, you know, um, <laughs> where's your brother at? Yeah, I'm on my brother's keeper. Man, try to get smart. responsibility. Yeah, the devil, man. <laughs> All coming along and these guys are devil. We told you they're devils. We told you they don't really believe in love. 
We prove Christianity, even the history of Christianity proves that these Christians don't believe that they love everyone because they haven't shown love to everyone. We told you it's life. Oh, you hate me. It's a life. Oh, hateful. You're hateful. Oh, oh we're hateful. But man, man are on genocide charges. <laughs> and you're the ones defending it. Let go or not. That's a bumble hole, man. That's why when we go reckless in this earth with the spirit when Yahweh Shai comes back, we don't want to hear about no human rights, bro. Because you man don't give a damn about that. <laughs> it's convenient. Yeah, yeah it's convenient, yeah. But let man have kill. Let us kill one person and see how many life streams he does on. Let, let Hebrews like kill one one child. Any any bit of news like that. Bro, honest. he will be on honest. that for the next two years. Like lot you'll be a <laughs> Be a super chats, blood. Like, yeah, come on. All lives matter, right? Gotcha. Go Psalms 58 and 5, which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. Right? It don't matter what you say, it don't matter how you try to speak him up or, or compliment him and all that. He saw, listen, he saw can, can't be satisfied, man. He says, death. If he, when Esau wants blood, he gonna take blood. When Esau, Esau gonna, gonna go for what he wanna do. A lot of you, Jake, are trying to appease Esau, man. Thinking that Esau's then gonna love you and he's gonna be equal. Listen, Esau will be like, all right, we're cool until you got something he wants. Then you ain't, you ain't cool no more. That's just Esau. And a lot of you, Jake, are gonna find out in the time of Jacob's trouble when that same devil shows his horns. And starts killing you and your children, and you're like, "Raw, I thought Esau changed. I thought it was all about human rights now." And nah, I don't give a fuck about that. Do flip on the twig. That's, that's the, the whole bombing of Palestine and that kind of stuff, right? Everyone was asking, "Oh yeah, but <laughs> they really tried to minimize that type of damage. They tried to straight even bombs and shit, man. In the screen, just bombed the shit out of everything and didn't care that all the children are. They didn't care. Oh, they shot man the the to. They shot their own man." They shot their old man in the church and their man were naked waving white flags. <laughs> hey, yo, real badness, you know. That's a real badness. That's a bad man sitting right there. But I said, no, wait, no, no, no prisoners, man. Even the own people. I said, yeah, no, I shot no, them. No, no, no. Kill them all and let God sort them. <laughs> hey, yo, God. Uh... <laughs> yeah, 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 God. Uh, Genesis uh, 3, let me start again. One, say, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, mm. which the Lord in power had emerged. And he said unto the woman, Yeah, as the most high said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, most high has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Right, so what that's talking about is error. You see, the, everything has this, has the world that the Lord created, there's, there's opposites. That's what the scriptures speak on, right? If there's a right way, there, there, there has to be a wrong way. You can't have a right way and not have a wrong way. Otherwise, there is no right way. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and the world wasn't created that way. Everything has a has a, a parameter that you could go outside of and then it's mash up. So it's the same thing with life. The the the, the fruit that we weren't supposed to eat of was the, the, the wrong ways, which is a large... The error goes on forever. The wide gate. The wide gate. Said the, the, the fruit that they were supposed to eat of was... The, the way of the Lord, the righteous way, the righteous path, which has been, which was later given unto the Israelites, the law, statute, commandments of the heavenly Father. He, he said, "Don't eat it." So the way of these really represents the way of these other nations. The way of error, don't eat of it, meaning don't consume it, don't even touch it, meaning don't even play with it, don't get involved in it. Lest you what? Lest you die, because the wages of sin. The scriptures say what? The wages of sin is death. Meaning, what you're going to reward yourself with is pain and suffering. It's not gonna, it's not gonna equal to what you what you really desire. Because ultimately, everybody wants life. Everybody wants the good life. They want good things to happen to them. 
peace and joy and all them things there. No, that's not what you're going to get. They don't, they don't profit. In the end, it's going to be a minus to your account. <laughs> Big minus, right? Well, listen to the devil and how slick the devil is. The devil is a master manipulator because he's going to tell you some truth to hit you with the lie. He knows the truth. And the serpent uh, said unto the woman, you shall not sure die. Right, you shall not surely die. Right, you shall not surely die. Go on, read on. For most child does not does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as powers, knowing good and evil. Mm. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for, for food, ambition, pride, pride, trying to go above your station, thinking you know better. And that's the way of the world. The way of the world is the arrogance to believe that you know better. And it's extremely arrogant. It's extremely arrogant. It's like a man, I always put into a car, a man design a car and he give you the manual and the instructions of how to maintain that car, that whole system. And you don't know nothing about cars and you just turn around and say, you know what? Yeah, no, nah, you shouldn't. You're saying I've got to put what oil in there? No, 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 no. I'm going to put this, co this cooking oil in there. <laughs> and man's like, yo, you don't even know shit about cars. I built the car. I know what's going on. Use the right oil. Nah, I know better. It's arrogance. Here it is. The Heavenly Father created this entire creation. Down to the, the, mild, the most minute detail. Down to the atom. Every algorithm that is set forth in this system. The most I set forth. Everything, every action has a, has a reaction. That's not an accident. That's why you can live. That's why this world, you can live in it and be logical and it makes sense. What happens if you, if you like jump off a building? <laughs> it's, it's everything you do has, you put an egg, in, you crack an egg into a, into a frying pan. You know, it's going to fry. Action, reaction, everything kind of, nothing surprises you really <laughs> because things happen how they're supposed to happen. The results are the results. They are generally saying aside from a miracle. Aside from a miracle, a normal, a normal, yeah, which is not supposed to happen. Yeah, it's, it's, everything goes by certain strict rules. Yeah. And in this universe, one of those strict rules is the wages of sin is death. That's a rule in the universe that cannot be broken. No one has broken that rule. Give me um uh, the book of Job, um, the, um since today's um. Which one is it? I can't remember the exact was it 20 that the triumphing of wicked is short. No one has successfully sinned. No, no one has successfully took upon them a way that the most high said is not good and got a result different. One plus one always equals two. You can't you can't make one plus one equal three. You can't make it happen. And that's what this society is trying to put into the minds of the people. Oh, you could turn a man into a woman. Oh, feminism, that's progressive. That will make life better for you. Oh, if you do this, this will, if you accept LGBTQ, that will make everything better. No. That you can change the fundamentals of the world. That they're trying to teach the world that sin equals life. If you sin, it's okay. What did that Harari guy say? He said, now we got the, in the ancient world, if you sinned, God could flood you or he could do this. Now we have the technology that you could uno reverse and, and right. full counter. Right. The arrogance. Now we just put this like, now we just Yeah, yeah go on, man. Read whatever you want to read. <laughs> uh, this, this is first Samuel chapter two, verse three. I just wanted to get to the point, right? It says, talk no more so exceedingly proud. Let no arrogancy come out of your mouth for the Lord is a God of knowledge. And by him, actions are weighed. The most I knows. He knows what's going to happen. He, he made the blueprint. And he said, listen, if you stick to this discipline, these are the results you're going to get. But if you go outside of that, and it's, it's, it's true for life. Like we all, a lot of us brothers, we're into boxing. Don't drink alcohol. <laughs> they, every athlete, like, what's the first thing that man told you when you're coming into being an athlete? Listen, live a clean life. You're going to have a long career. 
you're going to get less injuries. Show me the athlete that has beaten that. Show me the athlete that goes out every weekend, is drinking, doing all this, doing up madness, and they're all 34, 35 still at their peak. Can't do it, man. The reality is, yeah, when you're 21, 22, 23, 24, and you're doing it, you can still turn up on the weekend and put in a performance. But what happens when you start getting to 28, 29, 30? All of a sudden, the legs ain't working that they used to. Oh, yeah. But the other man that was living clean, he's still going. Why? Because your ass was drinking and you can't beat the system. The system is the system, man. The results will be the results. There ain't no way around it. Oh, no. You, you destroy your body. I'll just give you another organ. They're just trying to go around the thing. You can't go around it, man. That's why they got this life extension technology because they're like, well, if we use technology, we could give ourselves everlasting life. Yeah, good luck with that. It's, it's, <laughs> as well, man. it's the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter two. And, uh, uh, let's see now. I'm going to read verse, verse 21 here, right? So such things they did imagine and were deceived. This is the wicked speaking, right? Then they were deceived for their own wickedness have blinded them. As for the mysteries of God, they do them not. Neither hope they for the ways of righteousness, nor discern a reward for blameless souls. For God created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. Nevertheless, through, through envy of the devil came death into the world and they that do hold of his side do find it. They think that the way of wickedness is, is some is the in thing. That's the in thing. And if you want to if you notice is that the unlearned unlearned soul are the souls that choose the wrong way. And then guess what? Over time, they always end up realizing it was the wrong path. So many paths in life that people take is usually what leads them astray is them early teenage years where you're young and you're dumb and you're easily influenced to do something because it looks cool. Most people that have these vices, when you ask them, when did you start smoking cigarettes? When you were like 13, 12, 13, 14, because it looked cool and it's the in thing. Now that you're 40 and you're coughing up half your lung, you're like, you know what? Yeah, it was dumb and I shouldn't have done that. That's why most things, it's young people that, you ain't going to get a 50-year-old that ain't ever been in a gang, join a gang at 50. It's men that are like 13, 14, 15, and they're too dumb to understand the perils of what they're actually doing. That's why Esau goes to his kids, man. That's why Esau goes to, in, in fact, teenage culture. He created a whole culture that teenage. is specifically targeted at the teenage, the so-called teenage uh, um, um, area of life and cut that area of life off from adults. So if you watch most things that are geared at teenagers, it teaches them, don't listen to anyone older than you. Listen to your friends. Listen to entertainers. Don't listen to your parents. Don't do the, 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 the. This is cool. If it's cool, do it. They just don't want you to have fun. Then what happens? They target that, man. No, but you know, the wicked, they think like um, doing, all, doing their own ways, like a cheat code to receive the same benefits as following the law, following the most high. But there, there's no cheat code, there's no shortcut. No. There is only one way. The wide is the gate that leads to destruction. Yep. Right? But narrow is the way that leads us to was it everlasting life. Yep. Yep. There, there's only one way to get that, to achieve that. Because that's a man meant to be immortal. Well, mm -hmm. well at least the, the, the righteous men are meant to be immortal, the elect, yep. right? But you can't get that by any other means. You can't do it your own way. You have to do it through righteousness. But these people think that they have a knowledge higher than the most high. That's why I'm like, listen, if the scripture says that's the way to do things, how can you, how can you turn around and say, actually, nah, like, what, like, who do you think you are? You don't even know, like, the level of knowledge you are on. How can you, who are you that you just know better than the most high himself? It's our, it's... Oh, most I call this worms, and, you know, this worms oh. and stuff, man. And it's so low level. You ain't even been self-aware for that long. <laughs> it were not long ago you were operating like an NPC, just eating and just consuming. You didn't even know what you were. You didn't even understand what you are. You're like a little five-year-old, don't even know what they are. They're just eating. 
I, I'm a boy. They don't even know what a boy is. They don't understand that. They just, ah. <laughs> you spent 10, 15 years on the, you've been a self-aware, and now you, you know more than the most high who's eternal. This is crazy. It don't make no sense. But that's the world we live in. It's a world of pride and arrogance where the, the, not, the, the doctrine of the serpent is what dominates this world. We have a different way. We have a better way. Oh, the Bible, that's outdated. That that knowledge could is not um cannot be applied at, uh, during yeah. these times or any time. Let's just speak about seeking the old ways. You know, going back to to to, to the origins of the law oh. and the righteousness. No, eggs have always boiled at a hundred degrees. Water has always boiled. The, 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 the laws, the, the Bible, the truth of the Bible is just as much science as any other science there is. Science is knowledge, right? It's knowledge. It's what is. The way of life has never changed, and it will never change. And how do we know that? Because the kingdom of heaven is going to be forever, and it's the same laws forever. It doesn't need to be updated or upgraded or or or, or changed. Or down here, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one box, yeah, these are just some people that makes it more complicated. Ain't never gonna be you a know? time where two men rooting around in the bedroom is 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 productive or or the right way to do things. It's always gonna be the wrong band. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, when's that gonna change? Or feminism, like all of a sudden women become superior. This is the Galatians six and seven. Be not deceived. Uh, Mostia is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also live. Right. If you sow evil, you're going to receive evil back to yourself. But you see, the elites through witchcraft, and that's already what witchcraft is. The, the, the scriptures speak about witchcraft being rebellion. And it, a lot of, um, when you really understand what witchcraft is, witchcraft is like the ideology of utilizing knowledge to to um manifest your own will without consequence so it's like, that's why they'll be like oh i want to do a ritual to empower a talisman to achieve this goal and bypass the most high whereas we're like no pray to the most high and if the most high will his word that's humility if the most high will but they don't want to leave it but, but they don't it's not for them they they, well, they yeah they think it's in their hands so i'm going to utilize the, the sciences and the, the horoscopes and the numerologies, and I'm going to make things manifest my own will without consequence. That's why they had a thing for what? Cremation of care, do as thou wilt, that they could just shed the consequences of their own actions and manifest their own will. And that's pride. Whereas we're on the opposite of that scale. We accept the consequences of our actions and we want to manifest the will of the most high. And that's, that's the difference between the Jedi and the Sith, you, 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 when you clock it, you, the whole idea of theology, if you watch the movie Star Wars, this, that was the difference between the Sith and the Jedi. The Jedi were one with the Force. Whatever the will of the Force is, they were humble. The Sith wanted to control the Force. They wanted to be, they were witches. They wanted to be in control. That's why my man switched to the dark side because he wanted to accept that his mother died. That, would, and, and Padme was going to die. He said, I'm going to use the force to stop her from dying. That's why I said, yes, we start this. It's going against the natural order. Yeah. Right? Even, even the city is like somewhere yeah. quite natural. Because oh, yeah. oh. they're going against the grain, man. Yeah, they're they're going against this, right? That's what it is. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what it is. So rebellion is as the act of witchcraft. And that is the doctrine that the serpent to this day is promoting to the people. But, but when you really clock it, it's all self-destructive. Because meanwhile, it's causing destruction to the people. The children, the families, everything that they're promoting to people has some short-term benefits, but long-term um, destruction. All the, the, the fashionable lifestyles that they promote to the youth destroys you within 15, 20 years. Cigarettes, um, alcoholism, all that over-partying, dumb shit. stuff, everything, man. You know what I mean? Uh, um, loose, uh, what do they call it? The free, free love and all that stuff. What did it do? STDs, everything. It long, long term, they burn out and and uh, and are dying. Uh, it's just what they say. For he that saw it, and, and then they give you some drug to cope, so that you can try to like 
numb yourself from the consequences of your action. Yeah, become an alcoholic. Don't worry, we'll give you a new kid. <laughs> now, nah, you follow the way of the Lord, you wouldn't have needed a new kid. And you could have still enjoyed your drink. Valid. <laughs> you know, all these negatives come with that. There's so much negative that destroy people's lives, man. Now you're in some fucking counseling sessions. <laughs> And you mix it, still mix it positive with your prophets when you put bad advice from the, from the devil. The Bible well speaks done. about balance. They tell you no, eat what you want. Go on, man. Uh, For he that soweth to the fresh shall of the, shall of the fresh lead corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit leap, leap life everlasting. Right, because remember, the flesh has no boundaries except when you die. Your flesh, your, your your flesh is insatiable. If you allow your that's why there's such a thing as addiction. If you allow your flesh to have control, your flesh will literally destroy itself. And if you don't know that, have children, and then you will find out. Children will readily do something that will destroy them, and you have to stop them. If you if you let a child, they will eat sweets until they have no teeth in their mouth. Literally. We're so dumb down. We like children, even when you get older. We- they want like a child, man. Yeah, they've always been taught to think like a child because they all they want is what they want. You know it's I mean? a lust. You, know? you have to learn to control your lust. You have to learn to control this flesh because this flesh doesn't want balance itself. Like it will go and go until you crash out, and then you might not make it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so you got to learn to be spiritual and the spiritual aspect because this word is spiritual. This word will help you. The what does the Bible say? Um, the carnal mind is enmity with the Most High because it's not subject to uh, the, the Lord, the Spirit. Your penis only understands uh, pleasure. It doesn't understand adultery. It doesn't understand how, why it's important to keep marriage sancti- uh, 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 a marriage contract. All it understands is I'm hard right now, and if the girl wind up on my thing, I'm going to pop. And you enjoy that, obviously. Your, your penis doesn't, doesn't react different to a married woman because it doesn't understand all that. All it understands is the external stimuli. That's why the flesh can't be trusted. That's why you got to go with the spirit. But if you give in to just the lust of the flesh, boy, you be out there eating until you're, you know, eating until you're obese, drinking until your, your kidneys are falling apart, or some other madness that's going to destroy you or destroy your family because you're not in no balance. Oh, man. Oh, you could eat something that tastes good that will kill you. <laughs> but but something that tastes bad is good for you. Like could be bitter. You know what I mean? So that's why you have to apply wisdom and, and, and spiritual understanding of things, man. Uh, Genesis chapter six, verse eleven. And the earth also was corrupt before God. And that's Esau's MO to corrupt everything on the earth. Right? He, he's taking things back to the to the flood era, man. No, the corruption is you know, rampant. No? Yeah, when, you, when the laws, the laws allows everything to operate with beauty and order. When, when the laws start getting broken, no one likes that, man. You will, how do you feel when you're stolen from? When something is stolen from you? You don't feel good. That's why you shouldn't steal either. And then once that contract is kept between everyone, how much better is life when people don't steal? How much better would life be if you lost something and people went and found you? How does it feel when you drop something and someone goes, oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Good enough. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why the laws are there, because it keeps everything working beautifully. You start breaking the laws, it, it's, it's a rift. It starts breaking things down. And in the end, you end up in a situation that everybody hates. Because if you live in a world where that's full of murder, theft and all manner of madness all that is going to come back on you even if you're doing it it's still all going to come back on you and nobody likes it when you when you could go murder people what happens when you when 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 um someone of yours gets murdered do you then just be like no you start oh you start crying just become a victim to the own wickedness your own back it's good to speak about that your, I'll let, he said your own wickedness is going to turn on you and correct you and that's what the ghetto is a big part of why it's so disgusting to live in the ghetto is because of the own people that live there. 
doing things to each other, making your own lives hell, backward and forward. Where if you actually treated each other in righteousness, the ghetto wouldn't be that bad. It's you doing wickedness to each other. That's your own. You're creating a belt for your own back because it's going to come back on you. The, the evil will come back. If you're, if you're committing adultery, and it's always the man that commit adultery on other men that cry and hurt the most when it happens to them. I can't listen up. It's a 100% guarantee you that's how it works. That's why you see them celebrity men, yeah, they get all hurt when their woman does things, yeah? What do you think they do? Tyrese, uh, listen, Tyrese done pop bear man gala laughed about it. These men have done pop bear man's wives and laughed about it. But then when it happens to them, all of a sudden they're on the internet breaking down and uh, crying, yeah, because... Sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> Bro, they're all, I know mans that will like that, but they like, they be the worst mans, man. And then when it happens to them, be a ball in them, man. They're hurt, beyond hurt. But bro, you were happy to go out there and set that precedent. Yeah, verse 12. Okay, verse 11 again. And the earth was also corrupt before the Most High, and the earth was filled with violence. Oh, and you see that now. The earth is filled with violence. It's not recorded in this book. Huh? No, no, it looks right. Oh, okay, cool. Just look at me, look. Make sure it's lined up. Thank yeah. you, brother. What are you doing? Are you doing something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bless, brother. Yeah, it, it, the violence is like breaking the commandments, man. That's an act of violence, man. Going against. <laughs> and we see this world. This world is so filled with violence, man, that the violence is normalized. That something even more, the only time people take notice is with an extreme, extreme version of violence. Like, no, I mean, as in, like, now. So, for instance, yeah, like, a man getting stabbed now is not even a thing. Like, in London, a youth, a youth getting, a youth getting shanked up, it's like, that's Tuesday. That's that, that, that act of violence is normalized. That when it happens, it's like, oh, yeah. It's not even a trauma. Now you go to another place in the world, a man head coming off is not a trauma no more because man head coming off so much. Like that's that, that the third world, we get shocked at the level of violence. Man, some brother sent a video the other day, the man's head was bust where I was telling this brother, the man's head was, all you see is like a, a, a flesh, blood, a mass of blood and yolk and bare hands gripping into the back of man's head, pulling out the yoke. Man, like, bro, it's like, they're like... <laughs> it's like some zombie thing. It's like, bro, look, it's like 10 man pulling the yoke out of the back of man's head, yeah? And then next thing you know, man's ripping up man's head, poking his eyes out, pulling them out. Now, when they, where they come from, that's Tuesday. Man will be like, oh yeah, that happened, and then move on. Certain places, the whole country, the whole, everything would stop if something like that happened. Like, what the f like, this is so this, this world wickedness is so pervasive that people blink at wickedness now. It's normalized, it's normal for murder to happen, it's normal for stealing to happen, scamming to happen. It's it's so prevalent that the level that it's happening on, it has to go even more extreme for you to be shocked. We're desensitized to, to it when really one murder is too much. One murder is too much. But we live in murder capitals where murders are happening all the time. It's just a statistic now. It's not even a, a it's not, they call it a, when a story is really mad, that'll be like for a week, two weeks. And if a story can only last a couple hours, then you know it's normalized. Nowadays, violence is so normalized. Yeah, yeah, man, get shut up. Da, 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 da. Literally, that, that, that news ain't even big for two hours. Oh yeah, that happened. To you. There, there, there's like, like built in parts of society. That's that's a part of society. Like. It's, so we, it's just like how it was before the flood. The earth is filled with violence. Even war isn't shocking no more. Mm -hmm. When they announced that they were dropping their missiles on the Houthis, ain't nobody blinked. Oh yeah, oh, okay. Because it's like, oh, what's new? This is always happening. <laughs> it's not a shock. Can I imagine the earth was in complete peace? For the last 200 years and that happened what the fuck? someone dropped missiles what the hell the whole world would come to a stop yo what's going on like here like what, what, what? 
Now it's like, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that man dropped the missiles. Okay, scroll. That's a fat booty. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, that's what I'm saying. We're in a messed up time. Yeah, black Euro settings, man. They were just distracting. Don't care about them. You desensitize because once something happens enough, it's not shock. There's no shock value anymore. It's just normal. It's like seeing your mothers in the ghetto. It's normal. No one thinks that it's a problem because it's everywhere. It's pervasive. Whereas you go to another place where they don't have a lot of that, just one would be like, oh shit, what's up with her? And everyone's like, you know, this is outrageous. Whereas us, it's like, mom. Anyway, <laughs> God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt. All flesh, flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. So there's a what? right way and there's a wrong way. A right and when way. you do the wrong way, you become corrupt, you know? And that displeases the Heavenly Father, man. He gets angry with that shit. Because it only just, you know, just proliferates uh, more and more wickedness, man. And the most I hate wickedness. It was made to be hated. Mm -hmm. It was made to be detestable. And this is what I'm saying. They're trying to make things which are detestable. Right. It, it, I just see two men kissing, bro. What kind of what, what clock thing is this, bro? It's disgusting, bro. But they're trying to make it where it's like, oh, and it's cute. No, it's not, bro. Nobody wants to see that. The not, most people have a, a, a reaction to seeing something like that for a reason. Because it's just wrong. Two men with beards, lip locking, blood. What are you doing, brother? You know what I mean? Like, yo, kill it. No, no, don't kill it. So I'm saying it's just, it's horrible. Man. It's, it's, it's disturbing. It's absolutely disturbing, but they're trying to make it like not be disturbing. No, man, it's not right. They're being like, being friction is the bastards. They're lightning for that. <laughs> lightning, it's not right, man. But Esau trying to flip, that's why I said the turning of things upside down, man. You can't make a stink a beautiful smell. Shit ain't ever gonna be a beautiful smell. Shit is the most high main roses. Roses smell sweet and shit smells like shit. Stop trying to twist up the thing. Yeah, you know, and then that's like something uh, like anything that smells bad it smells like shit. <laughs> that's how bad it is. It's just like shit. That's like, you know, it's testable, you know. Uh, verse 13, and, and the Most High said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Yeah, violence. Now, it's funny because when you go into the kingdom of heaven, what is it going to be? There's going to be peace. There's going to be peace, man. The world is going to know peace. Because the violence, man, is, 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 is most of it is just as a result of just nothing but wickedness and the flesh. Yeah. Let's talk about this. What sign? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, this is Matthew 24 and the 12. See, even that, but that guy knew about the Hebrew Israelites. The more and more men know about, about the Hebrew Israelites, man. That's why Volcan Malone, he's got a lesson coming up talking about how the Hebrew Israelism is growing. You're damn right it's growing. Because this is the light being, being uh, in, the, in the dark place. The light is being brought into the earth and through us. What did this just say, though? This thing being... Uh, uh, you can't do nothing. So you're just sitting there worrying about something. You can't, you have no influence over it. It doesn't matter how many fucking videos you put up trying to tell you know, the bunk or whatever you're trying to do. Right? right? You can't do nothing to stop this. It's only going to grow. It's not only going to grow, it's going to overcome and, and completely saturate the earth with light. Beginning with the elect, but then once the elect have rulership over the earth, that light will be forced upon all people and all nations. Every corner of, there won't be a single land in the earth which will not be under the reign of light that will be hidden from light. You know, you got Mordor. How did we not see this? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then the other man goes off, he's like, <laughs> and, then, and then but the orc just comes through, he's like, oh shit, there's like a whole fucking, you know, army here. How did we not see this? Yeah, yeah, because the darkness was shrouded and hidden it. Now, in our kingdom, there ain't going to be no little corner of the earth somewhere where men are doing wickedness and we don't know about it and they're just there being batting man or something. Amalek in one of them tunnels. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. And maybe there's a pyramid in the tunnels for the kingdom. So they can you know, do Nate's rebellion. Thing. Yeah, they should have done them, man. I'm talking as a joke, man. They don't like how the Lannister, Tywin Lannister in the books. Then man tried rebelling against it, man. He just he, they were down in the caves. Man just rerun the river down in there, lock them in there and drown all them motherfuckers. Don't do that though. That's that's just me being a, telling a joke, a dark joke. Get it? Go on. 
Uh, this is Google from Matthew. Uh, 12, I mean, uh, 24 and 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of men, the love of many shall wax cold. Hey, there's a saying, hurt people hurt. When you get hurt and you get violated, it makes you want to hurt and violate other people. People, it's, it's, it goes right in a circle. People that have been abused tend to become abusers. You know what I'm saying? Because the darkness infects you and you become a dark person. It's true. That's why we live in the world we live in because people hurt each other and then they don't trust no one and then they start doing, you know, wickedness to other people. Oh, that's why you can't deal with these fucking women. How are you going to deal with a woman, yeah, that's been scorned by a bare man? So she's going to scorn you at the first chance she gets because she's okay. been hurt. So she wants you to feel her pain. <laughs> she ain't gonna, she's been hurt. Her people are going to hurt people because they're fucking hurt. They don't care. When you've been hurt, you lose empathy. You know that? That's a known fact. When you've been hurt and bad things have happened to you, a lot of people become unempathetic to others mm. because of their own pain. You know what I'm saying? So that's why we need a big part of why we live in the world we live in, man. It's crazy. You can't trust people out here because people have been hurt too much. They've been stolen from too much. They've been beat up too much and all that. So they don't grab to fuck you up. Yeah, man, they've been darkened. That's why you have to fight to retain light within yourself and your integrity to do the right things. Because this world makes you just want to be fucking. I'm just going to be like everyone else and fuck people over. I might as well just scam people. I might as well fuck them. You know, I'm going to scam them before they scam me. And all this shit. That's basically how our people think. Mm-hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you know, guys that they've been saying that all fucking day. Just well, but, uh, you look at the entertainment industry, they use the guys they've already broke in to bring other people in and they purpose, they break them people in because that's what happened to them. So they're like, if, if I had to have it to make it, then you ain't going to come in and just make it like that. You're going to have to give up some ass too. Because I had to give up, my, give up, you know, give up the ass. You're going to give up the ass, man. Everybody ass getting given up. <laughs> hey, fuck that, man. Just work in McDonald's, man. You know what I mean? Quick burgers, man. He's sucking no dicks out here, man. That's crazy. Go back to Genesis 3 and 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was present to the eyes, present to the eyes, they, it could be dressed up. And that's, that's what I said. Like, like most things which are self destructive are dressed up, they're made to look cool. Like, like there's so many things. They glamour. That's where you get the word glamour. Glamour is actually witchcraft. It's a it's a terminology, and it's no no. That's why they call the fashion industry glamour to glamorize. When you glamorize something, you're putting a, a a false image of that thing over to make it look better than it as actually is. Now everybody wanted to be Mia, right? What's that? What's that name? Was it Cassie? No, Cassie. Because they glamorized Cassie, right? Meanwhile, Cassie was getting done out like a jersey by a PDD and everyone. Her life was a hell, but from the outside, it was glamorized to make you want to desire to be her. Modeling. Modeling is one of the worst things you should ever do. A model is nothing more than a prostitute. And they run modeling the same way they run the music industry. They get you into debt. So when you join up with these modeling agencies, everything they have you do goes on to your balance. So when they drive you around, they fly you around, it's on your balance. And then so a lot of them end up in debt being a model. So then what happens is after the show, someone will come around, oh, there's a party. Um, you can come to the party. Um, you'll be there. We'll pay you to be to the party. But when you come to that party, you're a fucking prostitute. And there's going to be man there with money. So you've got, you, you got to be there and then they'll give you extra money to do things like suck them off and all those things. Now, obviously... And they got cocaine and the drugs and all them there. Obviously, if you're broken in debt, you're going to take the fucking money in it. Because they've already put you in a compromised situation. Yeah, they get you on the drugs, like you said. Man. They get you on the get, drugs get, and all that stuff. That but then you're not going to see all that fuck shit that they got to do sucking some old Jewish ass, asshole, dirty ass. All you see is the fact that they're on the, the magazine and it's all glamorous and they're smiling. So that's how, the, that's how this, this society gets you. They dress everything up. Feminism was dressed up. They use the magazines to dress feminism up as if it's something good. 
when really feminism was about you just fucking yourself over, fucking your family over, and living a lonely life, and going to work for Esau and get nothing from it, except money at the end of the day. Which you have to give back to them anyway. But they dress it up. So self-destructive uh, uh, um, agendas. Read that again. And that's what the serpent did. And the woman was like, oh, it looks good to the eye. Because if some things, if you look at it at face value, like, yeah. But then you've got to look deeper. You've got to look beyond face value. You've got to look beyond the short term. That's called wisdom. You can't take everything at face value. Yeah, it sounds, that party sounds sick. Everybody in there got STDs, brother. You got to just leave that party alone. Sometimes you got to allow it, sir. It looks good from the outside, but bro, you see them passport bros going to them third world countries, bro? Them, them baddies over there, bro, they've had more dicks than, than meals, bro. They got AIDS, man. Passport bro come back with AIDS, bro. You, sometimes you got it looks good from the outside. <laughs> it's rotten on the inside, bro. Be diligence, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got to check that shit out, man. TLC, everybody thought they were living the life. Then they come out and said, nah, man, we broke. We fucked up. Who would have knew? Uh, okay, so look, it's in the scripture, but uh, evil eye. I was, I was trying to find it. You know, they actually told them celebrities, you have to smile all the time. That's why they're always smiling. They always look happy. But they're told, when the cameras go on, you have to put your face on. But then you find out they're fucking depressed and on pills. The cameras go on, they have to put the glamour on. Make sure your makeup is on. Make sure you're dressed nice. Make sure you're smiling because we want the people to think that you're living in heaven. Meanwhile, Harvey Weinstein, anyway. Oh, man, that's disgusting. Genesis <laughs> 3 and 6 again. And when the women, women saw that the tree was good for food and that it was prison to the highs, uh, can I just interject again with this scripture on that point? It's First John 2 and 16. It says, um, well, verse 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in, it, in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, right? Is a is lust, lust overcome, over, overcome her, man. You know how many people in small towns? LA is known for that. Laws, hundreds thousands upon thousands of thousands of young girls they live in an, in a nice little village somewhere everything would have been all right bro mm. they would have been cool yeah it's not glamorous you know it's just a nice little town right. small everyone knows each other take care of each other do you know what i'm saying there's one bar <laughs> you know what I mean? there's one thing but life is cool you're making ends meet you're gonna get a job there that, they're watching MTZ, they're watching all these things, and they see in the glamour, and they leave where their town is and go to LA, I'm gonna be a movie star, and they end up porn stars or pro and prostitutes, hooked on drugs, and die of overdoses. That's a fact. Thousands upon thousands of thousands of girls, small town home girls, buy into the glamour and go to LA, trying to be the next Angelina Jolie, Die, die, crack infested whores. Oh, chick people like Britney Spears or something like that. She's you know, in that sort of background from out right there, right? Got put on Disney or whatever. No. And then she becomes, she grew up and become a pop idol. She became a pop idol. A lot of you people know? go to the city. Yeah. It's a lot of people go to these cities where they think it's all the glamour and them cities destroy them, bro. They get destroyed. Them cities are dark. It's dog eat dog in there. They get destroyed. Demons in these cities, man. And, but but they want to go there because it's glamorized. Yeah, that's where it's boring where I'm from. I need to go here. Yeah, they got nightclubs, all this is going on. And night, night, the night. lust of the world, man. And they get drawn out into situations. But even even John, when he got given that revelation, he marveled at the parlor and everything that was going on. Lights. Lights. Yeah. All of the light. Yeah. All of the light. Yeah. Dazzling. <laughs> you can't see straight. Yeah. Dazzling, man. But there's a lot of sick shit happening underneath them lights and in the dark corners, mate. Yeah. A lot of sick people. People that will fuck you over. 
people that will murder you, people that will set you up, that you weren't going to have in that small little town. Because the man them in that small little town were like family, they cared me. Not in LA. LA, everyone was just trying to get a piece of love ability to to us old, man. They don't don't care, man. Fuck, man. You'd be out there in the street on Skid Row. Fuck. Just talk about it. It's true, man. So that case, if all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh and the loss of the eyes and the pride of life, I thinking you have to make your life better. Yeah, you know, you want to get all these things and all that, but they come in for cost. It comes in for cost, man. So it's not of the father. But and social the media has made all that worse because social media has just made it where all these things, the, the loss of the world, are just in your face, twenty four seven, man. That's why you got to be careful. You got to be at home. TV or no more. So, you know how many people live their life, these, especially these women, they've watched all that Kim Kardashian and they follow her on social media and Kim Kardashian's life is completely glazed, man. It's glazed and glamorized. Kim Kardashian is actually a prostitute. They don't ever really show that. In the, they don't, they're not really showing you the reality of her life in reality TV. It's literally all glamorized. This girl was fucking uh, used by her parents as a piece of meat. Her mother, she done a fucking sex tape, three of them, and her mother reviewed which one to release to the public. Now, if that's what... It's a clinic, she's a successful businesswoman now. And that's blah, the glamour. Blah, 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 and she's got the makeup yeah. and all that, and she's going on holidays. Yeah. All that is just glamour. And it's just the fact that me, that's what everyone behaves like out here. Whatever they gotta to do to be where they wanna be, it's, you might, you know, you might as well do it because, you know, you feel like it's gonna make you better in the end. But these men know? have to take drugs to get through the day. Have to take drugs. A lot of my alcoholics, drug takers, to get through the day. You see, most of them Hollywood actors, they clip them in pictures when they're not in front of the camera. They look fucked. Why? Because them men have done so much ungodly shit. And had to sell their soul and bow down so much that it eats them away at the in, in the inside. It, it, and so they just have to douse the alcohol, the drugs. Anyway, remember that, that top DJ here? He was like the number one DJ and he killed himself. Because he, 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 man, anyway, go on. Yeah, yeah go on. on. Uh, this is uh, Isaiah Five and Prince. Why unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter? It's twisting the world around, man. So evil is glorified. And in a lot of things, what's happening now, they've twisted the world around so much here yeah, that you can't even be, you know, you ain't can't look, look, yeah. You see this whole Cat Williams thing that come out? That's not nothing new. Everybody knows. I promise, you, I promise you this if you're my age, you know that all these celebrities have sold their soul to Satan. There's no way because there was a time on YouTube when YouTube was just filled with videos exposing what these people are really on. Right? you got more chance of getting cancelled for coming out and bunning buddy, man, than being exposed for being a Satanist. Because the reality is that the world, these people have been demoralized to the point where no one cares. No one cares that cat that this person's an industry fan or da, 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 da. it's not an issue no more. They can all come out probably now and tell you that they're Satanists. They want to get cancelled. Man, still buy the albums and listen to their music because the world's been demoralized to that point. You got fucking cancelled with Nas X and shit. You know, like not my face off the table now. You feel super that nigga. You know what I'm saying? So well, why did Matt they came out and said anything? Yeah, why is he not being cancelled? He ain't gonna be cancelled. But let let a man come out and talk certain things which are right, they'll get cancelled quick. That's how it works, man. So right now, you can expose all the wickedness. Well, the, the, these people don't care. Because that's only that's what they, they want anyway. They want wickedness to be like... Uh, open, yeah, they, they, they don't fuck, man. These people don't, are not going to go all of a sudden go, oh my God, these people are all sent, Satanists. Let's stop them. Nah, they're just going to carry on. They want to be them anyway. They still sell their soul. Even, even this is like, you know, like, Test runs to see how much people are kind of come yeah. along in terms of accepting this yeah, bullshit. Yeah, what did they do about it? They didn't you know, do shit. They ain't, they ain't rioting. Uh-huh. They didn't start doing a riot. Oh, uh-huh. all these men are sell out. We need to do something about this. They can just go and watch man special. Who says that we can do more now? <laughs> yeah. We can bring more shit out now. And they will. Shit. 
Book of Second Ezra 15 and I'm start from 5 say, Behold, say the Lord, I will bring plague upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. For wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their artful works are fulfilled. Yeah, the wickedness is, is totally persuasive, pervasive, and the minds of the people have been completely corrupted. And these people don't stand for righteousness or anything that's good no more. They've been completely subverted. That's why it's all about the elect. And, and, and dividing. Because they're all just about themselves now. Yeah. So the these people are not together. Like, you know, spoke about earlier, love nation, but they don't care about people. No, no, right? So when this place deteriorates and, and it collapses, man, things don't be fucking horrible, right? They care about pretending to, <laughs> to appear righteous. Yeah, appear like we're virtue signaling. Same, That's same, what... same as what we have. Yeah, remember, do you remember yeah. that whole thing? These people are crazy. Do you remember that when that woman got killed by that police officer? And it was this big thing about, and then he, all of a sudden, he had all these women on Twitter talking about how, yeah, I'm scared to leave my house. Bullshit! I saw you out last Saturday walking home alone off the club. You lying, but you had some woman from Oxford saying, I'm scared to leave my house and go running. You lying, what in Oxford? Fuck out of here. How are you scared in Oxford to come out of your house and go running? You lying. It's just they just wanted to jump on that wave. But where's all that wave gone? You know, it's no one's talking about protect women because that wave is gone and we can stop pretending now. It's just bull it's so much bullshit, man. I'm scared. No, you're not scared. You're going to go out on Friday night, yeah? You're going to get in a black cab by yourself, man. Still be drunk. You don't give a fuck. He's that scared you're staying ass doors, man. Yeah, they don't give a fuck, man. Come, come, come on. I'm scared. Uh, them same women, I want to see how they're living their life now. They're still living their life scared and they don't come out. And, and if they're not, then what came? It's bullshit, man. This internet thing and all that. People just say things on the internet, but it's just, it's not even a real world. Demons. Oh, no. In Oxford. Therefore, said the Lord, I will embark it. You know, barking, I can understand. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, there's a bracket out there, but not Oxford, but ain't nothing out there but there. Like, come on, bro. You know, goons and that, you know, the, what, the mean streets of Oxford, like, fucking country lanes. The Shires, bro. Fuck out of there. Yeah. So, you know, the 15 and 7. Therefore, said the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and and righteous blood cries unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. Well, that's it. Who is usually complaining about this place? Who don't agree with this place? The we're not trying to negotiate with this place. We're saying let it be destroyed. We're begging Esau to, to, to do right because he ain't never going to do it. We understand he ain't going to do right. trying to fix it or tweak it. You know, we can start again. We're going to start over. Yeah, reset. Right. Yeah. And do it the right way. It's a write off. This place is, is it, when you get a car, like sometimes you have a car crash, you take that car to the dealership. It's, there's a reason they call it a write off. It's like, brother, we can't, can't, fix, we can't fix this, bro. It's, it's you, you made it look. It's fucked. It's fucked beyond too far, fucked up beyond repair. This this world is like um when you go into the scriptures, you learn about leprosy of the house. There's a point where it's like, yo, you take the stones, that. you can't even reuse the stones, you just need to burn it all and build a new house with fresh, fresh stones, man. That's this this society in this world. When I say it's, it's like the foundation, right? Show foundation. You can't build upon this foundation. You can't like take some of it away and build new stuff on it. You can't do that, man. It has to be leveled. That's why Yahweh has come to level this place, man, and build, build again. <laughs> we're gonna start over, start you know. And then this world, this world can be built on a short foundation. Well, do it right from the beginning, you know, because right now it's not on a short foundation. Hey, sometimes you can't fix it. Hey, like the central line, <laughs> you know. Oh, it's <laughs> that like the central line? They're trying to improve it and update it, but technically, it needed to be built bigger from the beginning. Yeah, it's start they, fresh, it? yeah they can't go now and retroactively. <laughs> Like I said, they, they could throw all the money. It would take so much money. They could throw all the money in the world and it still wouldn't be right. No. It still wouldn't be right. Because it wasn't fit, built, built to fit the purpose that it's doing now from the beginning. And this this society, this society wasn't built to fit the purpose of life. Mm -hmm. So it just needs to be destroyed and we're going to build a new, a new world. 
that's designed for life. Well, it's like, it's like, it's like the covenant on better promises and everything has to, everything has to start afresh. Yeah, like these, a new, a new, a new, a new heaven, a new earth. It has to start afresh. Hey, you know, these UK houses, why are the doors so damn small, bro? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fit nothing in for the fun. No, you can't. You know, I know some guys, they put the double doors in the front now, yeah. The way too fast, it's still a single <laughs> door. <laughs> What's wrong? What the fuck? What's wrong with this? Dude? What's wrong? Yo, just buy it now. That's why, that, that's why faces like Ikea are so big now, because you, if you flat pack now, you get a fucking door. But the flat pack shit. Yeah, it's not quality, man. It's shit. Yeah. In comparison, you know, it's something that's not so right, but in comparison to a, a fully built thing, that's built properly, like, just the, from the Shire, from the Shire and Lord of the Rings, some yeah, Hobbit yeah. doors. Oh. No, this place needs to be destroyed, man. <laughs> hey, go on, man, go on, let's go. Back in function, man. Yo, this thing's crazy. But it's true, even cities, man, like, a lot of places in certain cities now, like, they can't fix certain things because... Like, like I believe in like San Francisco, a lot of the road system in San Francisco started off as cattle trails, which is why it's so fucking all over the place. And now it's a city, but the, the roads were never designed for a city. The roads were cattle trails, and you know the cattle were just moving anyhow. So, and now they built around it, you can't really fix it. Well, there is a way. <laughs> you just got to level the whole thing and start and build the road system properly. And that's how Jerusalem is going to be. Jerusalem is a city that's going to be built fit for purpose and perfect from the beginning. Not this patch up, patchwork thing they got going on over there right now. It's going to be built again. When you say patch up, it's like these roads when they come to, to do road works, right? They dig it up and lay, lay down fresh time out. But that time out is fucked. That new time out doesn't even last long. Oh, but you know what? That's a good point. You know, when you've got a hole in the road, Really, you can't come and add new tarmac no, on no. top of it because it falls apart. Or that's like, like new, new cloth old garments. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you can't. Can't. Like you need to basically do... Uh, that's a good point. See more science, man. It's more science. <laughs> yeah, you're a smart brother, man. I didn't even think of like that. The garment, you can't... Yeah, you can't. Yeah. You, can't, you, can't, yeah. you just need to make a whole new garment, man. That's a good... Yeah, man, that's a beautiful point, man. And that's the, the principles of the law. It's wisdom. It's, wisdom. it's science, man. So we're not going to come and take over this society so that we sit in the House of Parliament and we take over their organization. No. Burn everything down to the ground and we're going to set up a whole new heavens and a new earth wherein dwell of righteousness. And that's why it says new. Because we're not going to take over the UN or take over the American government and put our people as senators and who vote. No, 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 no. Brass the whole thing. Remember, there's, there's not going to be you no know, remembrance of Esau, man. That includes his organization that he built everything, man. I was in the criminal oh, court wearing them dumb wigs, man. You know what I mean? Just rass up the whole thing and start from scratch, innit? Sometimes you got to do that. You got to just start again. Everyone's hey, fucked up hey, a cake. But you know, no one, no, no one ever wants to do that because it's a big undertaking, right? Yeah, it's a big undertaking. You're down straight. <laughs> but hey, 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 we got plenty of workers, so don't worry. <laughs> hey, you know what? Sometimes it's like that we're cooking. You yeah, could yeah, fuck yeah. up a, a dish and you try and save it, yeah? yeah. But you can't save it, really. You just need to start from the beginning. Yeah, sometimes you can't save it. Sometimes you can save it because it's not, but sometimes you just can't. It's done. You fucked it up. But anyway, and that happened the other day. My mom was cooking some goat water and she sandwiched it where it's edible, but my aunt didn't want to eat it. She's like, this ain't, this ain't goat water, though. It's just meat that has a, it's a different flavoring. She couldn't save it, you know? It was it was sad. I ate it though. It tastes good. It just wasn't what it was meant to taste like. It doesn't save it. So for Marakai, one and four. Whereas Edom says, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desert's presses. Thus said the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them, I mean, they shall call them the board of the weakness, and the people against whom the Lord has indignation forever. So anywhere Esau set up, they're gonna be their way is always corrupt and always has been. These men are not the pinnacle of of light. They're not the bearers of light. They never have been. Oh, the, the Enlightenment era. They call it the, the age of enlightenment. But you man ain't got no light. What are you talking about? What light do you have? These fuckers they ain't got no wisdom, really. They got the wisdom of wickedness, but well, they're not enlightened because if the world, America's supposed to be the pinnacle of their world, 
But the most dumbed down foolishness even, and self destruct self destructive behavior is the way of America. They they misuse knowledge. Everything's an abuse. They substance abuse, child abuse, everything's getting abused. That's not the way. It's ah, how could that be the way? It's filthy. It's disgusting. We're the people of light, the elect, beginning with the elect. We are the ones that are, because the light is these scriptures. It's not some random books, all these fucking self-help books. Man, want to teach you uh, the ways and Zen and all this shit. That's bullshit. There was already a book that had the light of the way of life and the wisdom of life that was always there from the beginning and it's gathering dust. But now they want to listen to the Dwayne, the Rock Johnson tell you. Fresh and fit, right? You know, oh, fresh and fit, you know, dumb niggas, man. But you see, the light is going to come into the world from within us, not really from the, from the book. It's the book is going to be within us, and then we're going to shine that light out into the world. Exactly. You know, how comes and bring us, brings us perfection. That's when we're going to be able to do that. Yeah. Right now, you know, we're just men in the flesh. You know, we're not perfect. But once we're imbued and and, and given this law in our, in our inward parts, then we like, then we'll be in a position to to you know. Teach the rest of the world that man. Yeah, you know, they're gonna fucking follow it, man, under the pain of, of, of righteous judgment. That's why there's the whole world waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Right. And not Esau, because yeah. Esau's way is the way of darkness and confusion, man. Go on, man. Man, God, you know, and transgenderism is just proof. How does that fucking make sense? Sorry for the, you know, the French, but how does it make sense? Make it make sense. How can that be progressive? Some man just needs to get, you know what I mean? Head yoke to smash out their skull for real, man. Ridiculous. But, go on, man. And your eyes shall see, and you, sh and you shall say, the Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. That's right, it's from the border of Israel. The Lord it was never meant to be magnified in Esau's land. Esau doesn't magnify the Most High. Neither is he humble to the will of the Most High. He's about his own thing. He's got his own agenda and he's pushing it in the earth. Meanwhile, he'll act like, yeah, we're, you know, this has got the American president will get out there and go, yeah, this is God's country and God's people. They don't care about what the Most High got to say about nothing. They got their own agenda that they're running with. Now, our kingdom, we really are going to push the will of the Most High. That's why it's going to be called the kingdom of heaven, because it's going to be the will of the Most High and righteousness being exerted in the earth through us. The righteous will of the Most High isn't being exerted by Esau. Esau couldn't give two shits about what the Most High got to say or, or think. He's doing his own thing, including Donald Trump. Donald Trump is doing his own thing, man. He's like he's the Messiah. What the fuck they talking about, man? This dude's a demon, man. Yeah, go on now. Psalms 50 verse 16. But unto the wicked God saith, Why is thou to what is thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take it, take my covenant in thy mouth, right? Because so they, they play that role as if they're God's God to people and they believe in the most high and they try to do what's right in the world and this, that, and the third, right? But what does it say? It says, uh, but seeing thou hatest instruction and casting my words behind thee. That's what they're really doing. They don't they don't actually hold themselves accountable to that to the to the words of the heavenly father at all. Bro, you go to jail. I'm just using this as a point. You got a wife, right? You marry another woman, you're gonna go to jail, yeah. right? But your wife commits adultery, she don't go to jail. So so it's like they don't even you could say, well, okay, well, we're under grace, we don't want to administer death penalties. That's fine. But you don't administer no penalties. Mm -hmm. A body man don't go to jail. Well, <laughs> actually, they do. <laughs> <laughs> actually, maybe you don't want to send a body man to jail. They're going to make their money. <laughs> it's all efforts <clears throat> in there. But the point is, is that they don't want to try and even apply the principles of the scriptures to the, to the world they live in. Like the other day, I was looking at this marriage thing. Bro, it, what it should be is Everyone gets a personal allowance, right, from tax. You get the first 12000 You should be able to take your wife's personal allowance of 12000 the full allowance, yeah, and put it on yourself. You should be allowed to do that. 
No, you can only transfer, I believe, 1,200 of her personal allowance to yourself. What, how, make it fucking make sense, man. You know how much of a difference it would make if you could take your wife's whole personal allowance to take it for yourself? That's, she wouldn't have to work because you're going to, the tax relief you're going to receive, you're earning more money. You actually would, uh, you have to, two people together working and getting taxed, right? You will make more money when really you'll have a guy that's earning more than those two people combined getting taxed more. Because I've looked it up when really it should be that if I'm making the big boy piece, I should be able to say like, listen, I'm earning this amount of money. I'm going to take your tax allowance and make, make so that it makes it easier so my woman ain't got to go work and she can help with the kids. This society is specifically not designed to establish the righteousness of the most high. It's working against you. It's oppression. And that's a that's an easy fix. If I was running the kingdom, I'd make it, you 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 could make it where you're making it where it's it's beneficial for people to live the way which is right, instead of making it easier for them to do wrong and then destroy themselves. You understand what I'm saying? Anyway, where we at? Let's go back to the. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Go on. It's Jeremiah 29 and two. When the righteous are in authority. The people rejoice, but when the wicked bear through, the people mourn. Right, because the wicked are going to just be corrupt and serve their own lust. And that's the way of the world. From east to west, you got leaders and nobles that serve their own lust, man, and stand only on their belly and don't stand on righteousness and stand on virtues. And then, so what you're going to get is oppression. Command are going to abuse their position, use their abuse their position of power to only benefit themselves. Yeah, okay. take those that will be power. Yeah, which is not what how it's supposed to be. If the most I raise you up with riches and influence and power, it's for you to serve the people. A king serves the people really almost as much as the people serve the king, because it's the, it's the, the king is supposed to take care of the people by judging righteousness. And making decisions that help and, and, and uplift the people. And that's what David was on. Moses was on that, a righteous ruler. Now you've got a bunch of people that just get in power. Only be, they want to get to know all these politicians only want to be politicians because it furthers their 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 uh, um their aspirations of, of power and, and money for themselves. Yeah, you can tell them, right? As soon as they get out of office or whatever. They make making big boy deals. They don't give a shit about the people. Of course. <laughs> they're, they're making money. You get the good the right. yeah, You yeah. get the good connections. You know what I'm saying? And your wealth increases. Because these are business people. Most politicians are really business people. And you use politics to further your business interests. Yeah? Because business want to be involved in politics. So they get to dictate uh, what they call it, uh, um, the laws and stuff like that. You know, insider policies, trading. Policies. Insider trading and all that kind yeah. of thing that they be doing. They're not really there for the people. And that's why a lot of power sits with these, with these companies. You know, uh, what they call it, man? These um, these lobby groups, lobbyist groups, and whatever. They have they hold a lot of power, man, because they, they, you know the the, the, the president elects and that kind of stuff. They depend on their money and their influence to do things, man. Yeah, they're, right, they're, not, they're not getting elected. That what's her name? That bitch, that nasty nasty whore that they got up talking about. She's vice president, and she was attorney general. She weren't judging in the, in favor of the, the poor man and in favor of the people. She's there to judge in favor of the corporations and the rich. Yeah, whatever the hell that, you know, haggis or whatever. Hey, yeah. go ahead. Huh? Yeah, so when the righteous are in rule, the people rejoice because what do people really want? They want equity and justice. They want, if I get wrong, I should be able to come to a court and have that, that justice done without bribing and, and all these things coming into it. And that's the crazy thing as well. You want to go sue somebody, man. You better have fucking money. Yeah, they, yeah, they'll, they'll because fucking Because the poor money. person ain't really no fucking poor. It's because they lack a fund. <laughs> yeah. No? A lot of time, yeah. Get they'll, they'll, they'll get to settle the case yeah. because you can't afford it, like, to run. So, so justice yeah. is a burden. That's, that's why they say uh, justice uh, delayed is justice denied. Because the longer the man's delay the process, yeah, yeah. the more you're just going to, oh, man, I can't even afford to get to the end of this. It's yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And, you, and there's a small guy, little guy, you can't last that long, man. It's fucked. 
So the whole system is, is an absolute joke. But that's why the 144,000 is going to be set up. The righteous courts of the earth. And when we come, we're going to judge not based upon uh, foolishness, like who is the richer one or what the prospects of you. Who, you know, yeah, no, it's going to be like, what's the righteousness of the matter? It's like you were discussing earlier about uh, truth, right? People arguing about truth. If they, some people just want to argue, say argue, but someone will, will acknowledge the truth. And that's what we're here to do, to establish truth and justice, man. Not to be biased and all that kind of truth. Mm -hmm. And that's what people really want. And that, that's a good way for the world to be. Right now, we see the world that, right? They got, they know that, listen, man, the state of Israel are going to do what they want to do. And even if they're found guilty, man, the US and the UK are going to veto the UN for doing anything about it. That's the end of it. Because even with this court thing, even if they find Israel guilty, all the signatories, they will vote, okay, that's wrong in the UN. But guess, guess who ain't? The US is going to say, mm -hmm. UK is going to say, that's it. Because that's that's <laughs> there's no power now. But these are the men that has, uh, are the ones that are meant to be forward in justice. Bullshit, man. See, the US is the main power in the UN, man. And if the UK is backing them, because they will, right? what's the rest of the bloc going to do? Nothing. They ain't got the power to do nothing. <laughs> the veto is there. You know? Go on, huh? Genesis 3 and the... I mean, finish over 6. And the... That was prison to the highs and the tree to be desired to make one wise she took the fruit. Yeah, these people, there's a lot of things out there. People think they're slick and they're smart with all these wayward fucking doctrines all over the internet, all over YouTube and TikTok. Like, like what's her name? Uh, what's that? Oh. Priscilla. That, that flipping nasty butch looking demon. You listen to her talk. She's just talking the most madness, man. And a lot of women listen to her. Yes, and she talks with a deep voice. Yeah, because the women, yeah. and she just spouting, and I rip books, and I'm print seller this, and then that. That's that knowledge to make one wise. Oh, she put me up on game. She ain't putting you up on no game. Because the way she's telling you to live has never been tried and proven and tested to do anything or to be profitable. She just spitting bullshit because she wants you to buy a book. Just like polite. Same thing. All these people are just spouting bullshit, but their way has never been proven to, to produce any form of society that's profitable. They just know how to talk and, and, and fool your ass and make it look nice and sound nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Scriptures is tried and proven. 40 years of peace during the time of Sodom. Everybody was happy. Everybody and was happy. And that's what happens when it's applied. It's when you don't apply it. That's, <laughs> that's when you get shit problems, went wrong. Right? That's when them lamentations and woes start coming in. That's when man start bawling, yo. That's when Jake is away. Away, away. What is a song from um, uh, uh, um, Tan Moja. Why, 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 why? <laughs> My people cry. You know? <laughs> Mama hungry. Papa hungry. Yeah, you know I mean, that's when you start singing all them songs, bro. <laughs> hey, go on, man. <laughs> hey, them curses, man. Let's finish up. Say, and did he eat? And he gave also unto her husband. Right, so he took on that foolish doctrine of the nations, right? And then she brought it to Adam, and Adam did the same thing, and he incorporated it. Uh, and then, but what was the result? Now the, the devil said the devil said, Oh no, but you're gonna you're gonna um become as gods learning good of evil. He was right. But what did he say to them? You shall not surely die. But, but they did die. The minute they started doing wickedness, you start dying. We're dying now. We're living in a world where you're actually dying every day because you're on the road to death. <laughs> and that's and that's because of wickedness and sin. Your body's deconstructing and dying, man. Like we earlier, man was made to be a mortal. Anyone's gonna live <laughs> forever they until up. he touched sin. That put death in him. Although he didn't die that day, but he was on that clock. Now, going back to the original thing, because you wasn't here, I know we've gone on a long time. But my point is, is that why didn't it say? Well, let's read it, and we're gonna get to the point we're gonna make. But we, we're gonna let the Mosai say. 
what he has to say too, of course. But and did he eat and he gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And they and that's why as a man you gotta stand firm. A man is supposed to be the pillar in his house, strong pillar. You know what a pillar is? A pillar that holds up the foundation. You go to them mad, you can go to a mad building, you're gonna them big bomb buckler pillars, bro. You punch that pillar, you're, you're breaking every bone in your hand. Strong, made of, and it has to be made of the right thing. You ever seen a pillar made out of marshmallows? No, they, when they find a rock for them pillars, they use them igneous, them igneous rocks. Bro. That's what you want. You want one of them. So, them, you, so you're ignorant, bro. <laughs> hard, you want one hard. of them granite rocks. Them, them are hard granite or, or, or some basalt. And you carve that shit up, man. It was always in volcanoes. Clark thing, and you can put the heaviest roof on it, man. And it's going to hold it up. The winds can blow. It don't matter. That, that pillar's going to be there, standing strong. That's what a man is supposed to be like. A pillar, a strong pillar of foundation holding up the backbone, man. That's why a man has to have a backbone to say, no, this is what we stand for and we ain't moving from it. Neither to the left, what does scripture say? Neither to the left or to the right. We're going to move on the straight and narrow. When it, the scriptures, that's what we're supposed to be about these scriptures. You're not supposed to be flip-flopping and no one ain't supposed to be able to make you flip-flop. The woman comes to you with some foolishness. You suppose, no, 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 we ain't doing that round here. We don't do that over here. Simple. I don't care how it look or how it smell. We don't do that over here because the end of that is, is death. And remember that a small thing always leads to a big thing. So the smallest, listen, a dam always starts off with a small crack. If When it's going to break, it don't break. You see the big break. How it started was a little... Um, in or you can have what's it called a whole you can have um uh, uh what it called the integrity it's um what's it called like air pockets you can have air pockets that you can't see so when you're looking at it from the outside looks solid but really it's got air pockets in there so what happens is the water starts making it wait and then if it gets in there and it's weathering it's really breaking apart you don't know. Then you get a little crack. And then it'll and then one day the whole thing just collapsed. And you think it would no. That started from a little tiny in impurity or and it grew into something big. So it's the same thing with, with people. You let a little thing come in, a little slight, that little slight builds into something much bigger. So the, the slight for your eye doesn't matter, that's only small. No, small things always lead to big things. You they're give a man an inch, up. they always end up taking a mile. That's why you've got to stay within the boundaries and don't soft up on it. It's a process. Wickedness always starts small and then it grows big. Now we're speaking on processes, man. It's, but, you know, we have, we've got to go through this journey, right? Yes. To learn evil. Because Adam was naive. He didn't know evil. He didn't know about that. So when Eve brought it to him, it was like, he didn't know any better for, for a little you know, for way of saying it, right? But we, have, we do have to know the evil side. So we know how to make right judgment, you know? Well, so we can be firm and strong. And it's been fully proven that the experiment is no, Nah, if you ain't learned that yet, it's 2024. Listen, man, if you ain't learned that there ain't no winning doing sinning, then I don't know what to say to you. We've had thousands of years of man sinning and no one ain't won yet. No one. Show me. <laughs> Esau, even Esau, like, he the biggest loser. And he's the man of sin. The man's going to be destroyed off the earth. Like, who won? Tell me. Show me who won. Who made it work? Which nation made it work? Which where's the eternal nation of sin? Where they at, man? <laughs> Crumbled, man. The plagues consumed it. Science, man, is proven. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna keep running the same experiment to get a different result. Nah, it's over now. Six thousand years of human history has proven the point. <laughs> Yeah, like, what, 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 you know, what, we got to go through this again? Nah, man, sin, sin it ain't winning, man. It ain't winning at all. Like I say, like the whole, whole knowledge of good and evil, right? This is the serpent said it. We should be, become as gods. And this is why you know, we're going to be made perfect in the, in the last days, because we are going to become as gods, man. Knowing good and evil. I said, but knowing righteousness. 
knowing to choose right. Well, he says Yahweh Shai, and he would know to choose the good. That's right. You know to choose the good. You know, so we will get put on that level, but you know, there's a there's a process to this. You got you got to understand. It's not enough. Like you got to understand. Like yes, if I do that, yeah, that's that's what's gonna happen, man. Hundred percent. And there ain't no way around it. I'm gonna fuck with Esau said what this God has got. There ain't no way around it. And the two thirds are gonna find that out because guess what? There ain't gonna be no way around their missiles. There ain't gonna be no way around it. <laughs> so we have to know all this, man. We have to go for this and learn. So we can tell others, look, man, that's what happened to you, man. You better do the you know do, do the, the right thing because otherwise, hey, sin will come for you, man. You know, problems. I mean, men, men are gonna be what? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Man's supposed to be that pillar, and that's why in this truth, it's gonna go back to that. That the man is the pillar. That's why the woman ain't supposed to teach or usurp authority over the man. Because the woman, women are not pillars. The women are supposed to be there to be under that pillar. And then we we lay down the foundation that they follow. We're not here to follow them. We're not there to 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 because a woman is is the weak. It's, at the end of the day, a woman is not the right materials to be the foundation of something. They can't bear the, They can't bear it, man. They're gonna break. They're not there to bear that backbone. You know what I'm saying? And hold bit, it firm. It it's the man that's meant to be holding firm, man. And she just had to do her thing. As as we well, as, she, as well, she meant to be a pillar of rest. That's right. Yeah, comfort. Beauty. <laughs> yeah. We you give know. her the thing to run with. That's the type of material that you are. <laughs> you know, for that purpose. But you see, this, this society's got it all messed up. In the, in Jake world, the woman is the pillar. Well, yeah, so if you got your woman being the pillar, a woman is like clay. She's going to be moldable and moving her which, every which way and unstable. Menstru- when she changed with the menstruation, man. It's true. Women women change. Like Even when a woman's trying to discipline children, women have so many different moods. They, can't, they find it difficult to be consistent with discipline. One thing about men, men are consistent. If it was wrong yesterday and I don't want you to do it yesterday, you ain't doing it today. And you ain't doing it next week. And that's why men have to be there around to be that force of discipline because we're pillars. Whereas a woman will have times when she going to flip-flop on the thing because the emotions, the moods change. It's true. We've seen it. Uh, this is the book of Revelation 3 and 11. Behold, I come quickly, hold fast, hold that fast, which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcomes, will I make a pillar in the temple of Mosiah, and he shall go no more out, and I will light upon him the name of my power, and the name of the seat of my power, which is the new Jerusalem. Which... Yeah, that's right. So the man is the pillar, and the woman is there for the decoration. <laughs> and you need that. You need the decoration. You need someone to rearrange the house. Because we, I would. I'm a, well, my house has changed like so many times. I just come home and shit's new. Oh, you didn't do that. <laughs> huh? Huh? You didn't do that. I don't fucking do that, man. <laughs> if it was up to me, the house would be the same as it was like fucking ten okay, years ago. Like, right? yeah. That's got a layer. That's got a layer. I ain't changing. Yeah, I'll change it. I come home and the dining table's over here. <laughs> this, you know what I mean? Because I don't, how you think it's perfect there? <laughs> you know, they, they change shit up, but that's, but that's what, but that's what women is, are there to do. They make the home. But we're supposed to be the pillar, the structure that oh, keeps everything know. within discipline and within life. And then once that's set up, then they could do what the fuck they want. She could go get new curtains or whatever, like, do the thing. You know? Make it look nice. And then most of them, like, okay, actually, when it, it is, it is better, you know? You need a little bit of change up, you know. I don't want no batty man but twerking in my living room, bro. <laughs> hey, one Jake I know went to some party with his woman, batty man party, and put makeup on and came into work and showed us. Us man were looking at him like, "What's wrong with this done, man? Why the fuck did you go to a party with your woman and have them putting drag makeup on you with a bunch of batty man?" <laughs> yeah, man. I'm not man be looking at that guy sideways from yeah, then. That's because he's a soft you. You met him. I'll tell you, he's a soft you, you know. He got with that woman and he's letting the woman lead him. 
because he did no way would he have come up with the idea to do that himself. He was, he's, he was. Yeah, man. No, fuck that, bro. A woman could never come tell me nothing about come putting on makeup on my face. Are you mad, man? You know, I'm gonna hit her. No, <laughs> but I'm just saying, that's just how I feel. Like, what are you doing, man? I don't stand firm in myself, like. I don't run them butty man thing there around there. I never learned that. What are you talking about? Okay, I'm makeup. Genesis 3 and 7. Hey, like. yeah. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig, fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they Heard the voice of the of the Lord Power walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Yeah, that's the prophets. God, that's like the prophets now. The prophets are that voice in the garden. Like, yo, what are you doing? <laughs> yo, what are you doing over there? What kind of madness are you on? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord Power. Among the trees of the garden. And the Lord power called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And, and, and again, the Lord was concerned with Adam. There were other people. The Lord wasn't really concerned with them. The focus, see these, and that's another thing. Christianity tries to make it look like the Bible is just some universal humanitarian. No, even back then when you read it. Adam was the only person. But he separated Adam from the rest of them. And he's like, yo, I'm calling to Adam. He didn't say, I'm calling to all mankind. I make you a fuck. He said, yo, Adam, what do you do? Adam was the son of God. He's one of his sons. That's what his Lord's been concerned with. Like, you damn about these fucking demons to that degree. They're going to be on the two of this. The Lord really cares about us doing our thing the right way. His sons. Training right now, right? you know, to, to move over the healing. That's what we need to do. So, what they're doing is, is different right now because they're going to be put under under rulership of our sons, you know, as they were meant to be. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told thee that I was, I mean, who told thee that thou was naked? What's made the shame? Have thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded, I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be my, to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did hurt, which is true. It was a woman that brought that into Adam. But again, that wasn't an excuse. And it's not going to be an excuse today. So you got to stand up as a man and hold accountability. Like, oh, yeah, my woman. She's a bro. <laughs> Consequences. So you got to stand up and be firm as a man. And that's what we're learning. Stand up and be firm as a man. That's the accountability. And the woman, don't listen to the fucking serpent. That's your accountability. Yeah, everyone everyone <laughs> tried to blame everyone. When you read the story, everyone was like, ah, it was this person's fault. Hey, you got to have accountability, man. Because you're going to have to pay for your own sin. And that, that goes back to the order. Woman listen to your man. Yep, yep. And man listen to the most high. That's it. Everything <laughs> runs. That's yep. the righteous order. Yep, yep, yep. That's what it is written, isn't it? The head of every man is, is uh, Yahweh Shai. The head of the woman is the man. Once it runs in that order, everything, yes. You start, you start disrupt that order at any point in that thing, then shit just starts going left. End up that Dwayne Wade. Genesis <laughs> hey, three and fourteen, and the Lord, say, Lord Power, and the Lord Power said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cast above all cattle. And that's Esau. Esau is the one that's cursed above all cattle. Because that manifested itself in Cain and it manifests itself in Esau. They're completely effed. Esau, Edom is effed. He's effed, man. Like, they're done. They're going to be removed. Because everybody wants to be here. Cut the bullshit. Like, yeah, obviously, when you're catching hell, you don't want to be here. 
But really, when everything's running good, you don't want to leave. It's true. When you're having a good time, you don't want to. You don't want to die in that moment and leave. You want to stay here. The hell they still want to be here, man. You know they don't want to die. I don't want to die yet. You know they want to. They want to build. They want to do things. They want things they want to achieve and do. Right? No one really wants to go. This is the spot, man. It's called I done. Yeah. Earth is the spot that we was created to be on. We to be. This is the. This is the the creation, man. You know what I'm saying? Like he's not gonna get exed out, man. Forever, he's just not gonna come back. It's like you know, you got a good club, and then man, you get a lifetime ban. You got a lifetime ban. You can't ever come back in. That's Esau. They're the only nation of people and the only animal. There's nothing else that's getting a lifetime ban. It's just him. You out of here, man. Yeah, go on. So we go for Isaiah 14 and we start from 18. All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, even. Even one in his own house, mm. but thou art cast out of thy grave like an an, an abominable branch, and as the lament of those that are are slain, transfigured with the with a sword, that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden under feet, thou shalt not be joined with them in burial. Because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people, the seed of evildoer shall never be known. Your, your heritage and your legacy on the earth is just going to be a condemned people. The Idumians, this is going to be a condemned people. You're going to be removed from paradise. Simple as that. No inheritance in the earth. No inheritance in the earth. It's done out here, man. And the earth is a beautiful place. It's very beautiful. There's so many wondrous things. So many beautiful things that the Lord has created in this earth for a man to enjoy. Man, no man on this earth has enjoyed all the things that's on earth to enjoy. Even the rich. Well, you know, like, you forget sometimes you go into Asda and you think that's the fruit that the earth has. Bro, the earth has bro, so many variations of, of fruits and vegetables and all these things. Like, there's so many things to enjoy. I'm very disappointed right now. Everything that we've kind of eaten on the shows, man, it's been so degrading. You know, because the earth has gotten weak over, over you know, all this time, but it's been abused. Right? So, what we're really eating is not really high quality stuff, man, not by a long way. But when this place gets renewed and refreshed, man, we're going to be eating oh, so good. many things oh. to enjoy with this earth. Oh. Oh. Oh, a lot of them, you've got to get mangoes from the right place. A lot of them Brazilian mangoes they're bringing in, I don't know what it is, but they just taste like water. That's not the proper mango. They're, they just, they just on a different level of lacking in all kinds of flavor. And the islands, you get, oh, you got to go to the islands and get the proper thing. The best thing they do over here is the Alfonso's that come straight from India. They're actually yeah. sweet. The Alfonso ones, but they're expensive, man. But that's how you, hey, listen, that's how it is. But it, it, the point is, Esau is actually going to be removed from the earth. Showing you that is the ultimate punishment. But you see, going back to when we started it, where did the Christian narrative of heaven and hell come from? Because why is the Lord saying, well, the day that you eat of the fruit, you're going to burn in hell forever? Where is the mention of burning in hell forever? And unto the serpent, I said, you shall burn in hell. He never said nothing like that. Generation. There is nowhere it says anything that anyone's going to be burning in hell. But wouldn't that be like, that's pretty important. If that's the case, if if the penalty for doing wrong in the earth is when you die, you're going to burn forever. And I don't think you understand how long forever is. Oh, the judgment. Like, bro, forever is a long fucking time. Like, put your hand in the fire for like a, a second. And now imagine that setting never ended. That's crazy. That's some like bleach. You know? <laughs> The captain thing, bro. That's crazy. That's you know how wild that is. That that if that is true, which is not, that the Lord never said that. That's what you lead with. I know. You're gonna burn to hell forever. Just never mention it. Yeah, it's a footnote. It doesn't really matter at this moment. No, it matters. He didn't say to Adam, yeah, yeah, you're gonna 
man are going to burn forever. <laughs> Not this hell talk even came up <laughs> oh, for a long, long time. Not really until they, they started talking about Gehenna, you know, with them doing the wicked sacrifice. Then, they, then, then the analogy started to come around. But it's, there's no actual place, most I sell, where you burn after, after you've been judged. Like, this never, doesn't occur. It's always been about what's going to happen to you in your life on earth. Always. Even here. What is someone that is telling Adam and Eve about how they're going to be on earth? Let's read it. Mm-hmm. It never said that. Oh, yeah, when you die, you know. What? Uh, can, I, can I read this quick? Yeah, of course. Uh, Joel 20, verse 15. Speaking about Esau, right? Is it Joel 20. Oh, I thought it said Joel. I was about to say, what kind Joel of fake thing is this, man? Yeah, Joel 20, 15. Joel 20 and 15. He has swallowed down riches, and he shall vomit them up again. God shall cast them out of his belly. He shall suck the poison of ass. The viper's tongue shall slay him. He shall not see the rivers, the floods, the brooks of honey and butter. But this, this world is going to become beautiful again, man. And it's going to be extremely pleasant. But Esau is not, not, uh, not going to experience no pleasant sea out of it, man. He's going to be in slavery for a thousand years, picking up dust off the ground and to nourish him. Right? <laughs> yeah. Mirror. <laughs> from, the, from the, the rocks that be breaking, right? They ain't gonna ex- enjoy or experience the earth in its fullness. Never. Even the elites right now, as much as they got, they couldn't enjoy the fullness of the earth because it's not, it's not current. But the fullness of the earth is not here, you know. So they're never gonna experience that as much as they've experienced thus far. And it's fucking ugly, right? Just, you know, a bunch of dark idiots is running around <laughs> the place. <pit, so. laughs> <laughs> The dark side is the dark side is you know. Yeah, that's crazy. So they're never going to enjoy this place how it's supposed to be enjoyed, man. And that's a damn fucking shame, because even the heathen are going to get to experience a little science, man. You know. So as much as the elites think they're on the fucking on levels right now, they ain't. <laughs> Not by the only way. thing they get premium is baby blood. <laughs> Yeah, so he should not see the rivers. He ain't gonna see what the Hey, you know what, Salaki? You know, it's a good example of the glamour. Them girls come out and talked about the Playboy Mansion. And the Playboy Mansion was one of the most disgusting places there ever was. There was dog shit everywhere, cum stains, like super unhygienic. But it's supposed to be glamorous. They didn't show you all that. And it was, it was took one of the girls came out like, talking about how sick it was, like in there. To actually be there. But why were they there? The man's money. What's the money? They but then the from the outside, everyone's like, oh, the Playboy Mansion, dude. Because it's glamorized. Oh. When the cameras are there, it's all makeup and all that. And But the reality it was just some sick CD place, man. It's disgusting. You know what I mean? Like, ugh. You know what I mean? But that's that's just another example that's come to my mind just now. Anyway, go on. Man. You should not see the rivers, the floods, the brooks of honey and butter. That which he labored for shall he restore. So everything you, you've got after this point, you have to give back anyway. Oh, another thing they glamorize is anal sex, man. That's why them, like, when they show you that anal sex through porn, that's not what anal sex is really like. Because them girls are being fake. They're faking everything they're doing, first, first right, and foremost. They're, they're, they're. Secondly, they've literally cleaned out their entire bowels to do those scenes. In real life, you fuck a bitch in the ass, yeah? You're going to get a lot of shit on yourself and everything. Yeah, it's just true. Thirdly, it actually is destroying their anus, yeah, where they just walk around and they shit just randomly. But it's glamorized. It's made to look like, oh, there ain't no consequences to this. It's fake, man. It's bullshit, man. This is what this world does. They try to push something to you and make it look like it's good and enjoyable and that's what you need to be doing. But it's fake. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's fake. How could it be nice... To have a 12 inch penis stuffed up your fucking ass, bro. You actually think people enjoy that shit? <laughs> They're getting paid and they want drugs. You know what I mean? It's like everybody else is going fake. It's fake, it's man. It's fake, man. Just put out there to fucking do you and all that kind of stuff. You know? it's disgusting. Reality is what? Yeah, exactly. It's, very, very it's like, glamour. It's glamorized. You know, it's glamorized, but it's just fake, man. Girls are on there. They're paid to make it look like they're enjoying that shit. Not really enjoying it, man. It's a job. Fuck's sake, man. You believe that shit? But they, they, that's how they get the people involved in doing all of this madness. But it's really disgusting. I've heard horror stories of people doing that anal sex and the shit that happened. Man, bitches, he's shitting on the bed. That's horror. 
That shit just fucked the whole night up, lad. I don't want to fuck my light night up like that. Bitch shitting on your bed. How do you look at a bitch and say, oh, she's shut on the damn bed, man? That's disgusting, man. Just stick to the punani, bro. It's sweet, yo. Just do it. Do it the proper way. You be all right, man. Go to sleep. Why are you going to do this extra shit? Literally extra shit. It's mad. But that's just another example by the serpent used uses glamorization to to put something on the people which is self-destructive the anus once you destroy your anus it don't come back it don't it will always be like that loose and just slipping shit out <laughs> i'm just telling the truth bro i'm telling the truth it's not the lick it's not the thing to do all right Tell it finishes off. Uh, Joel 20 18 said, That which he labored for shall he restore and shall not swallow it down. Because that's your hoping that you want to keep an everlasting kingdom for yourself, man. Mm. And that's just not possible. Because you, you know, you're covered in sin like beyond measure. So you can never hold that. You can never hold this place down. Yeah, your kingdom can't be eternal because the algorithm is set up that only righteousness can be eternal. Just the way the algorithm is. You can't, I don't care what numerology. See, the whole idea of the New World Order is for them to use witchcraft to establish their version of the kingdom of heaven, which is an everlasting kingdom for themselves. But you can't break the rules of the universe. It's literally written into the code. Can't. I don't care. What, I, what is numerology? Yeah, I mean, I'm a 7 and 32. And it, oh, shut up, man. <laughs> what the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah, you know, in the moon and that. bro, it ain't gonna work, bro. It's, it's, it's the algorithm is set, man. It's set up like America is gonna be destroyed. That's all the algorithm is already in motion. It's prophecy. Can't go around it. There's nothing you can do. There's no, there's, there's no knowledge you can gain. I don't care how many tombs you dig up, man. Like Indiana Jones. Stars, you son of a child. It's not gonna work, brother. If you're trying to do the most to upset folks. Sac oh, you could sacrifice the whole planet. It's not gonna work. You know, there ain't no currency to pay that off. According to his substance, shall the restitution be, mm. and he shall not rejoice therein. <laughs> right? It ain't gonna be a pleasant day for you that day, man. It all, it all, man. They left with nothing, and then you move from the earth. Then you're gonna realize all this you're doing is bullshit, man. All vanity. And you could have just chilled, man. Be here at the end of the world. Enjoy the, the books of honey. <laughs> but you're not going to keep anything. You're not going to enjoy the new world. You ain't going to have to part in it. That's, that's, that's a tried and tested thing. People that overreach and try and have it all usually end up with nothing. That's, that's, that's Las Vegas. <laughs> Friends go in there and they never happy with what they got. And they go, 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 go. And at the end of the night, it's like five in the morning. And they were up. Like, they were up. At 12, at 12 midnight, they were, ah! Like, and then by five in the morning, they put everything on black gear and, and they tried to win. They lost a whole bunch of it. They tried to win it back. And, da, 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 da. and all you're leaving with now is a hangover and shame. <laughs> and you were up. If you'd have left at 12, you'd have been fine. But that's that's it. You overplay your hand, sir. Good day. That's, that's, you, oh, that's pride. You overplay your hand. It always ends the same way, and that's Esau. He overplayed his hand. But, and this, you know, this is why Cain said that he's, he's, the judgment was greater than he could bear. Because he didn't die. He didn't get killed. He didn't most of the execute him for killing his brother. He didn't do that. But he, put, he, he cast him out in shame. Not yet. You know, <laughs> yeah, not yet. And, and then even him, where was, and we're going to get it, where was the talk about Cain going to hell? That's what we want to know. We, we was asking. Cain was even protected. Yeah, we, we just want to know. We just want to know, did Cain go to hell or not? That's what we want to know. And why did the Lord tell him that? Father of sin. Let's keep it going. Well, well, not father of sin, the first murderer. Yeah, yeah did yeah. he go to hell? Because I didn't remember hell being mentioned. We're going to check it. Uh, Genesis 3 and 14. And the Lord power said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cast above all cattle and above every beast of the food upon thy belly. So the Lord decided to curse him, to put curses upon him. But isn't that what happens to the rest of us here? When we do wicked, it's a sin. Curses come upon us. Huh? It doesn't mention hell. Uh, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and the dust 
shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and our seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise thy his heel. And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thou and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So we don't really hear nothing about anyone being punished by burning in hell. So when did this whole narrative of if you're a bad person, you're going to burn in hell, and if you're a good person, you go to heaven. When was that the thing? Let's go to Cain. Can we, just, can we get the Cain murdering his brother? Because surely the penalty of... I mean, what else can you do? That's like the worst thing you could possibly do. So that like, just lead with that. Like, yo, we're gonna burn the helmet, man. Forever. Which that wouldn't even add up. Think about it. In the law, you kill someone, you get killed. That's called balance. Because the justice is a scale. But you know what I mean? But justice always has to have a balance. If you don't have balance with justice, that's crazy. That's when people start getting done in for like the minorest infraction and they'll get like ultimate kill cartel style you know what i mean like for what you know what i mean man farted in the elevator and get scalped or something you know what i mean it don't make no sense justice always has to have a measure even when it's with a thief in the law there's a measure they have to pay back seven times it doesn't say unlimited or whatever you want there's a measure you know justice judgments have a measurement how could it be a measurement if you like you're a murderer, but now you're gonna burn forever. The woman's life, you're gonna suffer for infinite amount, infinite amount of lifetime. You know how long, but then you say God loves everyone, bro. Do you know what's how? Bro, that's crazy. <laughs> like that's like, that's wild. Do you know how long forever is to be torturing someone? <laughs> After death. Yo, <laughs> after dying. How is that? But, but God loves everyone. But then you're teaching that he's burning people. There's been people burning from since the days of Adam. Like all the men that got killed in the flood, they be burning, yo. It's been <laughs> just in the waters. <laughs> yo, do you realize that you Christians are teaching that all the men that died in the flood are burning? They've been burning since from then. from since then, and they're still burning now. They literally just burned that there's been like 10 seasons of 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 of, of um of, of, of walking dead. They were burning all the way through it, bro. They were burning through Marvel, through through the, the endgame, and then just the whole thing. They just been burning, yo. Lord of the Rings, everything been burning, bro. They've been burning from way back. Make it make sense. And not only did the most I like, killed him and like drowned him, like it's fucked up still. Burned him. <laughs> Then after that, besides you know, torture them for the satanic flames. <laughs> but, uh, it's real. That's crazy. You believe that. You Christians believe that. And then with a straight face say God loves everyone. That's wild. And, and not everyone would be like would, would have done like some major crime. Like a major, major thing, like you know, you just bunch of murderers. What the fuck would you, you know do to be burnt forever, bro? What kind of sin could you do to be burnt like for six thousand it's been six thousand well. Yeah, since the flood, there's probably been a lot, what, like 4,000 years? Even the East of slavery is only 1,000 years. Yeah, that's wild, bro. That's crazy. That's like a... You don't even... Like, man's break down when Esau gives them 25 to life. What's up with the man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leaving on people. You're talking about eternally burning, bro. That's crazy. Bro, you guys are out of your mind, man. That, you got to lead with that. If that's a penalty then that has to be on the front page. You know when you get the warnings, like the warning labels that's just up front. Do not touch. <laughs> Death. You know. Hey God, huh? Oh, this is Genesis 4 and 4, I mean, and 3. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain blood of the fruit of the ground and offer an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought a, of the festering 
of his flock and of, of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and, and to his offering. Uh, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. He had not respect. And Cain was very low and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou loath? And why is thy countenance foreign? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lies at, thy, at the door. Now remember, the wages of sin is death. Right? So death represents the, the, you know, all the things that could have happened to you wrong leading up to actually die. You know what I'm saying? Like, a bad time. Yeah? Never said the ways of sin is going to burn in hell. You are leading with that. <laughs> don't, I don't know. What'd you say? What? Burning after I die. That's what I want to know about. I don't want to know about all that death. I want to know about eternal fire. The eternal <laughs> fire. That's what, you know, if that's the case. Yo. And it's funny because in Christianity, that's at the front of their message. But it's never been at the front of anyone else's message. Moses never said, oh, by the way, if you man don't keep these laws, you're going to burn for, for like unlimited amounts of time. Unlimited burning. He did mention a lot of curses. He did mention a lot of catching hell. Yeah. 228. It's going to feel like hell. <laughs> yeah. uh, and unto thee shall be his desire and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Hebel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up and uh, uh, rose up against him, Hebel. So he doubled down. Not only did he bring an uh, unworthy sacrifice, right? He then doubled down on, on, on his wrath. And so decided to destroy his brother who was innocent jealousy man and esau's got that same spirit today be jealous of jacob the elites are because we've been accepted that's why that's why they hate us because they look at niggas and they're like man motherfuckers these are the chosen people still but there's nothing he can do esau was rejected so he could never be because esau wants to be number one wants to be number one, he wants to have all the benefits of being the prince, the, the king. So what did we just read? Said, uh, if you do right, we'll not be accepted, right? Like if you do, do wrong, what is it? And death, yeah, death shall rule shall over you. Him. Or sin shall rule over you. Sin rules over Esau. He can't escape. He can't escape from his wickedness, man. He, he's, his wrath is too much. right? And that's why it's ruled over. That's why he's going to receive it then, is death. You know? He's so jealous and, you know, it, it, it's crazy. But we can understand why he's jealous, because he just wants to be us, man. As messed up as Jake is, the root of Esau's hatred is always jealousy and envy, because we are, we are privileged. It is true. I'm not going to lie. We're an extremely privileged people. I could prove that we're privileged. What did we do to be the chosen people of the most high? Absolutely fucking nothing. Now, that's not saying we, by being the virtue of the chosen people, we've not had to go through a hard path, but that path is set and secure. There's really nothing we could do to fuck this up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, there's nothing we could do. We didn't say, wake up one day and say, oh, we're going to be the chosen people. The most I chose us before we knew ourselves. And she's the part, man. The Lord set it, the, his will for us to be the chosen people. And Esau is not. And that hurts Esau. It hurts him. Deep down inside, isn't it? But it is what it is. You know, some people are gifted in ways that other men are not gifted. You know what I mean? I'm not six foot eight. I'm not the world heavyweight champion. It is what it is, and I'll never be that. <laughs> you just have to accept it. <laughs> you got to find your lane, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> hey, some man, jealousy will kill you, man. Jealousy will have you acting strange, man. Hey, the Lord give gifts unto men. Huh? Amos 1 and 11. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Because he did pursue his brother with the sword and did cast of all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. 
saying wrath came had. He's angry, man, that the Lord put us in that special position, made him a ship bowl. <laughs> you know, because the most high he make he's the potter, right? And he make one vessel onto honor and one vessel of dishonor. And Cain, he saw they were made for vessel, uh, vessels of dishonor, man. He's, he's um Macbeth, man. Macbeth. He's, he's, he's just the, the, that old adage of the king's brother, always jealous of his brother and the and the, 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 the throne that his brother's gonna inherit. That's his Esau is that jealous, the jealous brother of the king that just can't accept that. Just be the king's brother, man. Is this, there ain't nothing wrong with that. It's, 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 it's all right. They know bad. You get all the bitches too. You know what I'm saying? Just relax. Nah, he wanna be. He saw wanna be Jacob, man. Sit at the dinner table with the king. Get, get the benefits, man. You're right. just not ruling. You just don't want the rulership. He wanna be. He want it for himself. And it's gonna end up with nothing. Go on, huh? uh, as the Zoli say, and it came to pass when they were in their field. That Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not, I am I my brother's keeper. And he, and he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood. Christ unto me from the from the ground, and now art thou cast from the earth again? What, what's the what, cast from the earth? He oh, never said, "Oh, oh, now you're gonna burn in hell." No, listen, I'm gonna curse you. For which that is gonna happen because that's gonna happen ultimately through Edom. Edom are gonna be cursed from the earth. They're gonna be removed from the earth. All right. Uh, and thou and now art thou cast from the earth, which has opened a mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When That's the only way you can cleanse. That's why Esau is going to get that judgment, man. Because what you saw to do unto us, which is destroy us, that's what's going to end up happening to you. Yeah. Did you said you said uh, much of the uh, the, the of God's blood. No? When thou tillest the ground, it shall not expose yield unto thee a strength, a fugitive. So it's, it's like a, he sort of thinks he can use his witchcraft with the chemicals and the pesticides and that kind of shit. He thinks he can get around that. But what you really producing? Cancers <laughs> and shit. You know, fucking up people. That's what you're really doing. You know, and you'll and you tell the world, oh, there's not enough food on the planet. Because you didn't get to have the, the premium stuff, but you'll get, you know, the insects. The, the WF, what you do, you insects, right? And fake meat and all this shit. This is wild. These chemical compounds and shit. That's what you want you to eat. What an asshole. You know? I have meat, blood. Asshole, man. He's, he's a real, he actually is an asshole, man. I'm going to have to eat insects, man. Stop it, man. Go on, bro. This, is, this guy's too much. Uh, a fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the hall. And something else he saw was always trying to run from his judgment. To face what he's done. Um, hey, the Lord has shown long suffering towards even Esau. Esau ain't paid really fully for all the bullshit that he's been doing, but it's gonna it's all gonna catch up to him. But he ain't gonna pay for it by burning in hell. Listen, hell ain't where you burn, here's where you burn. Is in that video the other day where that dude was crying and screaming in a damn car? Because he's Listen, boy, this is where you burn, man. You don't burn in the spirit realm. You burn here. Here's where the fire is at, man. You want to know where people burn? It's here. In Vietnam, when they drop the napalm. That's you know, where people get burnt, man. This is where people get tortured by demons. If you don't believe me, go on fucking gore.com or, or that shut that down. Go on Live League. This is where the demons torture you, man. You know, scripture speaks about in, 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 the, in the heavens, the, the wicked are at rest. Yeah. You know, they ain't, they ain't, they ain't, you know, receiving no problems, no troubles up there. They're, they're, There's a dude right now in a Mexican kitchen <laughs> in hell. There's <laughs> demons in the kitchen. Yeah, in a Mexican kitchen, the bro. Some dude named Jose and his nephew with the shake, holding the camera, shaking like this, while my man's peeing in his chest piece off, man. 
That's this is hell right here. This is where you witness hell, man. Terrible. And then fucking you, like hospital and shit, man. It's fucked up, man. You want to find yourself being kidnapped and end up in a fucking search, you know, surgery table, like getting taken apart. Always <laughs> well, a missing this shit. You don't want to. Hey, man. Hey, this is where man's getting, set, getting their balls and their penises removed, man, when they're 12. Yeah. Hey, that's fucking hell, man. Hey, go on. That's crazy. Imagine that, man. What a mistake to make. Anyway, go uh, And Cain, and Cain said unto, unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Now, I mean, this is the point. It's, there's not even a mention of burning in hell. So, so where has this come from? Where is this this idea? Like, can you search the word hell and let's see where the context and where it's mentioned in the Old Testament? Where is it? Where is this thing? Because the prophet surely the prophets will come. Hey, look, man, you're gonna burn in hell. No, the prophet said, listen, you're gonna go into slavery. Why was that? Four times. The constantly he was like, you're going to go into slavery. You're going to get killed with a sword. And these are the things that the prophets were saying. They never once did the prophets say, oh, you're going to burn in hell. Surely you would admit that would be like a big thing. Big, big. Is, is that, that's massive. I don't know. Is it just me or is that not? I'd like to know that. Like, off the bat, like, at the beginning of the conversation, this is going to burn for all eternity. I hope cool, I heard that. I don't want to hear about the slavery and all that, because that's like insignificant. Like, I'll take some slavery. <laughs> it, might, it might be that, you know, the most high destroys you with fire. Yeah, I, yeah. But, but not eternity of fire. No, it's that's never, that's never mentioned. Like, that's crazy. That's, that's. Oh. Spirit of learning for what? Oh, well. Well, 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 you know, so, so why are we going? So why are we taking the elevator down? So where did Christianity get this notion from? It's a foreign doctrine. It's not a biblical doctrine at all. Now, hell is mentioned in the scriptures and heaven is mentioned in the scriptures, but not in the way that these are, are, are destinations for, for, uh, for punishment or reward. Hell is the grave or a lower state because obviously the ground is low. Or heaven is the sky or the spirit world or a high estate because heaven is higher than earth. You understand? But it doesn't, it's never been put forward or as, as a, a destination for you. Like the prophets are like, oh, one day you're all going to go to heaven. No, it was like one day you're going to be in the land of Israel, keeping the laws and live good. It was all about something that's going to happen here. In the kingdom of heaven, here on earth. Uh -huh. yeah. We're talking about preaching the kingdom of heaven's at hand. Yeah, it's here. <laughs> You know, he said, "Is in you." In you know, he was a preacher. Well, yeah, we all need to go to heaven. No, you go. Yeah, yeah. If you want to go to heaven, you know, but you want to go to heaven, it's just fucking dump the bridge, then, isn't it? If that's if that's what you're on, let's can we get some of these scriptures for hell? Yeah, because maybe one of them. In fact, the first time it's mentioned is in Deuteronomy yeah, 32 yeah. and 22, which is after the after the the curses and the blessings were mentioned, right? But you think you mentioned that in the curse? You've got to lead with that. That should be part of the covenant because it will be like if you break my laws, yeah. I'm gonna burn you forever. Yeah, yeah. That should be in there. Like, how could you not put that in there? If it, that's a big thing, that's what I'm trying to say. It's massive for it not to be mentioned. But like I said, we was given a lot of curses that was actually going to the hand of our enemies, being you know divided and separated, being at like war with one another. All that, all that type of stuff, man. It's having a fucking well, real bad time. Verse 15 to verse 68. And not one of those verses mentioned dying and going to hell. You've got to make it make sense. Right, so his first mention here, do only 32, 22. It's for a fire, fire is kindled in my anger and shall burn into the lowest hell. What's really happening here is Lord speaking poetically. Yeah. Well, the hell, what, well, look up the word hell. It means it's sure, which means the grave or the pit. Earth. That's why it says the lowest, because it means the ground. ground. You put, you put, you put under, you go in the earth, right? You get put in that pit. So that's what it is. You put, you put in a pit. But right? does it say that anyone's going to be put somewhere to burn in hell forever? No. So it's just being correct because he's angry, man. He's going to put death. <laughs> that's, that's what it is, right? But fire the same, burn you to the ground. That's the saying. <laughs> that's what he's saying, isn't it? Burn to the ground. For fire is kindled in my anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with, with, with her increase. It's, it's consume what? The 
consume the earth. So, 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 so the Lord's talking about fire consuming the earth. So, so yeah, where can... is hell then? Now, now you've got a question to ask. Is hell part of earth? So if I dig, if I keep digging down, eventually, am I just going to, and fall? hey, shit, what's okay. going on? There's a party down yes. here, man. I'm on fire. It's on fire. I guess Esau's science kind of like, adds to that. Because they always speak about, oh, the, the poor earth is a mountain, this and that, or, or whatever. No, no. So there's people, no one fucking knows. So, but then it'll be physical then. <laughs> so, so is it your spirit or the, you see how all this confusion comes up when you just dig there? No. What the, even if you just keep talking about, the Lord is talking about a judgment to happen on earth. Because what does it say? Can we, can we, can, yeah, yeah, read it again. What does it say? For a fire is kindled in mine anger, uh -huh. those angry, right? Yeah. And shall burn unto the lowest hell, the lowest ground, yeah. And shall consume the earth, consume the earth. So he said, I'm going to put a fire on you, on earth. Go on. With her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. So what's he burning? The land. He's saying, I'm going to send a fire and it's going to burn the land. What's the increase of the earth? This is the increase. The fruit, the lemons. Lives. <laughs> lives. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it's talking about. The Lord's putting a fire. It's not talking about no mythical region known as hell. The hell there just means the ground. Sheol. There any more any, any more scriptures? Yeah, second Samuel 3. Oh my six. goodness. So the next time hell is mentioned is not until second Samuel. You think about it, man. If if hell is that's a big thing. Why would it is mentioned in Deuteronomy not mentioned again in Second Samuel? Come on. It says here, Second Samuel 22 and 6, the sorrows of hell come past me about. The stairs of death prevented me. The sorrows of hell come past me about. Lord, the stairs grave. That's why there's something called being in grave danger. Sorrow of hell. Hell meaning in a low estate. Being brought to the ground. Being low. Any more? Yeah, Job 11, 8. Yeah. After that, yeah. another closing job. So it is as high as heaven. What canst thou do? Deeper than hell. What canst thou know? So what is hell? What is what is as high as heaven? What does heaven represent in this scripture? Up, the sky, space, the heavens, high. What does hell represent? Low, Low the ground. Right? A, phys a physical place. Physical up and physical down. Unless you want to tell me that the mythical region you believe is hell where people are burning is somewhere that I could dig down to. Okay, let me get a spirit to slay Let me get a few more for you. Very little bit. I says, um, Joel 26 to 6, hell is naked before him. Right? But how is hell naked? Is it, what does he mean by that? Right? He goes on to say, a destruction have no covering. Which I mean, I'm assuming the word covering is like defense. You know? So when the Lord is opening judgment, there ain't nothing that can, that can protect you, man. You know? It's open. You're just there to get your fucking ass whooped. You know? Destruction, right? Death, destruction. Uh, Psalms 9 and 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. Now, is that, did the Lord really do that? So how does the wicked get turned into hell? Hey, you're being brought low. Like, for instance, Palestine got turned into hell. You can't tell me they didn't get turned into hell. I've seen the videos. Man's yoke. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, when you got to be, bro. One guy buried his whole fucking family, man. That man killed everybody. They killed his mother, his fucking grandmother, yeah. <laughs> his daughter, everything. You know how mad that is? Like, as a man, like, you, you, you know, and they yokes all bust out their head and all mash up, man. That's hell. You look around you, all the buildings are crumbled. Palestine, that's what happened to Palestine. What this is talking about is the judgment of the Lord, but it's on earth. That's why it says they shall be turned into hell. Just like how Capernaum was exalted onto heaven. What did that mean? That when they were in the, in the spirit? Come on. It means they were living good. They were living nice. You turned into hell, you turned into the ground. 
brought being brought down. That's a saying because poor people are usually on the ground. But they say, what well, goes up must come down. Yeah, you're on a low level. Usually, your homeless man's always on the ground. <laughs> Life ain't so good. And even in, in Rome for today, when you see people walk through. The homeless man, they're on the ground. Everyone else is up walking and my man's on the ground, but down bad. That's it, down bad. They, when you say, I'm on the come up, you're on the down. What's lower, what's the lowest region? The floor, the ground, the grave. That's where you put people. Oh. And this is speaking about the Lord now, right? Psalm 16 and 10. For thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption, right? Because when you're in the ground, you decompose, right? Yeah, yeah. The Lord was going to stay buried, you know, for longer than three days, right? He was brought back. So that's why so they corrupt. The hell represented your body in the ground, in the grave. The Lord was putting that Unless you're right? telling me, well, they, they say that Yah they, their Christians say that um, Yahweh Shai went down into hell to, 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 to minister us. <laughs> Onto people that's burning. That's, they've got no ears. <laughs> oh no, no, we ain't trying to no, we don't want to listen. Are you crazy? Man, burn it, man, listen to anything. That could be coherent, man. How can a man in burning burning not heed you on the streets? I, I come to offer you <laughs> salvation. Now fuck that. We ain't trying to hear that. I'm too busy burning. Now every man believer, listen, you put a man in the situation like that. Everyone wants to believe, bro. So okay, so hold on. So what about the people that go until after he was invisible? What about those guys? It's the whole thing's done. This whole thing's done. The scripture Sheol is talking about the grave. Are you married with death? Dying. All right. It ain't talking about no spiritual region known as hell. Goofies. That wouldn't make no sense. I mean, yeah, it's just the lack of. There's just nothing. Foundation to it. There's no Isaiah. Show. Is there anything with Isaiah saying anyone's gonna burn in hell or anything? Let's see, Isaiah. First one, Isaiah is five and fourteen. Uh, Therefore, hell have enlarged herself, opened her mouth, the ground's grave. That represents mass death, without measure, and their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoices shall descend into it. Those that are proud. And I was talking about their army with death. This is talking about death. Isaiah 14 9, hell from beneath is moved, moved with thee to meet thee at thy coming. Wow. Wow. You're going to meet your death. You know, there's actually a saying like that where you hit the, you're going to hit the ground hard or something like that. I've seen the priest of this. Like that, yeah, yeah. But they, that's saying, meet, meet death. Yep. You're going to meet death. You won't, you won't die, man. This is um it's served up the death for thee, even all the chief ones of earth have yeah, raised up from their uh, thrones all the kings of the nations. Um yet uh, Isaiah 14 and 15, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the size of the pit. The pit. So what's hell? It's the ground. It's a low estate. I mean, no, the, the whole point was it's gotta be in the old testament, right? Now. If it's a doctrine and it's already existed, it must have been in the Old Testament. Amos 9 and 2, though they dig into hell, hence my hand shall take them, take, take them, through they, though they climb up to heaven, hence will I bring them down. So what's that talking about? What's can you, can you, can you about? push your way into heaven? You can dig into hell, the, the mythical region, you have to die to go yeah. to. Because remember, it's not physical. The, the reason you have to die to go to hell is because it's not a physical place that's here. This is earth. So how the fuck can you dig in? So can I climb into heaven as well? The actual spirit realm where you go where you die, can someone climb up there? Or do I just sling a fucking rope up into the sky and climb into heaven? This is a joke. <laughs> if I get a rocket, can I rocket myself into the spirit realm? This is the foolishness of Christianity. The narrative that they're pushing Oh, you're going to die and go, no. You go into Ezekiel, you go into Isaiah, you go into Moses. The end goal of the scriptures is for the Israelites to live in the land of Israel forever and keep the laws of the Most High. That is what Isaiah said, Jeremiah said, Ezekiel said, Moses said it. This is what it is. 
Jeremiah 21, and I saw holy Jerusalem coming down from heaven. Where? To the earth. That is what is in the scriptures. Revelation, the, the second chapter. What does it say? They shall rule over the nations. My Revelation, the fifth chapter. And they shall reign in the earth. It was never about going to heaven. And it's never about going to hell. Ever. This time it's still the kingdom of Israel, right? The, the saint shall take the kingdom and possess it forever and ever. It never said nothing about going to heaven. That's a bullshit. That's never been a prophecy. It's never been a prophecy. Even the Lord's Prayer, right? I mean, how it goes that uh, being being uh, on heaven as it is on earth, vice versa, right? Because that's the idea, that's the goal. To make this realm like it is in the heavens, man, in order. But that can only be achieved. Because it it's not like that now. There's no order here. Right? But that's the goal. And that's going to be achieved through Yahweh Shai and, and the elect of Israel when they're in rulership. This place is going to be like that in order. Is Hebrews 11 and 16. But now they desire a better country that is an heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. That heavenly country is the, the, the new Jerusalem, which is going to be established on earth. And why is it going to be heavenly? Because it's going to be blessed. The light of the Lord shall be there. The lamb shall be the light thereof. It's all about what's going to happen on earth. The meek shall inherit what? The earth. So for those that follow me, they're going to receive what? Lands. It says so in the scripture. Lord, can we get that? Lord, what shall we get if we follow thee? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, like, what are we doing out here? No, no, they're going to, you're going to go to heaven. You're going to go yeah, to heaven. Yeah, and just, just, we're just going to be floating around in a mist with a bunch of Edomite leprous babies with wings flying around the place. And we're going to be up there with all the slave masters. Because today, to this day, they can't, I always ask, you know what them crackers that had Jake in hardcore slavery, are they in hell or not? The Bible said he that hated his brother is a murderer, right? They hated the Jakes they had in slavery. So are they in hell? Is your great grandfather in hell? Burning, Burning yeah. Oh, fuck you, nigga. It's not, make it stop. <laughs> It's bullshit, man. The Bible says, he that leadeth into captivity must be burned in hell. No! He that leadeth into captivity must go into... Well, what's the point of putting them in captivity if you're only going to burn them forever anyway? It's like, just skip to the burning forever thing, innit? What's the point? It's a mute point. Yeah, yeah, you know. Put them in. Why put them in slavery? Just die and go burn in hell forever. Done. Like, we don't need to think about it no more. That's the judgment. The only thing they got going for them is the lake of fire, and the lake of fire is talking about on it's earth. Exactly. It's going to be here on earth. That's why they're going to look down and see. Look, look. Come on. It said, Fire shall tap, consume the tabernacles of bribe. Matthew 19, and 28. And the hour shall say unto them, Very I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory. Where's that gonna be? On earth. That's why Yahweh is coming back to the earth. That's another thing. Why is, Lord why is he coming back to the earth? Why don't we just go up there? Why didn't everyone just go up there? <laughs> Why is he returning? <laughs> Just let everyone die. And then everyone will be where they need to be. Why? It's only a mechanism for this. Wait, you know, when people die, where's mama? She's going to heaven now. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to hell. Everyone's going to, they're going to heaven now. 
Okay, so then why is the Lord even coming back? Is John done? Either believe or don't believe, and then you, you believe you go to heaven, and if you don't believe, you go to hell. What's the point of him even returning? Because what does the prophecy say? The Lord has to gather together his elect from the four winds and place them back in the land. That's why he's returned to reign in the earth. Come on. Christianity is so, like, it don't make no sense. It's a fairy tale. It's, 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 it's just... It's it's, yeah, yeah, it's paganism, <laughs> man. It's just a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It's just some mess, messy fucking doctrine, man. <laughs> you know, because a lot of it is inspired by Greek mythology, man. Right, man. All this, all this Hades and the realms of hell and all this shit, that is inferno and all that shit, man. But that's, that's all literature. <laughs> it's just, you know, science fiction. You know? Yeah, it's good to watch. I mean, I enjoy a good, listen, I enjoy a, a good Dante's Inferno. I'm not going to lie. I'm a hella entertained. We all like a little bit of Devil May Cry, don't we? We like a bit of Spawn. It makes for, for, for entertainment, but that's all it is. It's entertainment. It ain't no real. It's not real. I like that movie, Constantine. I quite enjoyed it. But it's not fucking real. It's bullshit. It, and it's one ahead of a doctrine to make you pay up, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the church has used it for, right? It made the fucking scare the shit out of you. So you pay your tithes, man. You know, that you give everything you've got. <laughs> so every time you do something bad, oh yeah, don't worry, just, just hand me a little something, man, and your sins are forgiven. Let's do that to burn it out. Before you read that, can I read this, Baba Kasha? It says, this is the Greek report of the concepts of heaven and hell in ancient Greece. And I guarantee there's more documentation in yeah. their cultures yeah. about heaven and hell than the, what we've just read in the Bible. We've just seen that, like, for the majority of the Bible, this isn't even a thing. I guarantee you go into them Greek things, it is big. They talk about it a lot. Anyway, the ancient Greece concepts for heaven and hell are, of course, different in many ways from the propounded by Christianity. I mean, do they even teach a heaven and hell in Judaism? They don't ever talk about that, do they? So, again, we've got a problem with it. We got a problem though, because then when did the God let people know about this? He just let people go to hell this whole time, <laughs> and then never mentioned nothing about that. Just had man burning. Well, it's a fear tactic to join the church. That's exactly what it is. That's what it is. And they were already used to that fear tactic from their pagan religions, Valhalla and all of this kind of stuff. Anyway, but in other aspects, they closely mirror the horror and the ecstasies of the places that were associated with them today. Like the Christian concept of hell, the Greek underworld had a ruler who was closely associated with its domain, the Ipomus god Hades, which again, I'm going to show you something. Hades is also Plutos. Plutos is also the Greek word for riches because Hades was the god of riches. Why was Hades the god of riches and simultaneously the god of Hades, which is the earth? Because what is Hades really? The Sheol. Because that's where riches come from. Physical earth. The rest of it was just all made up. things. No, the actual fact is that's why they were. If you wanted to get rich, you worship the god Hades because he was the god of the ground. And that's where fucking gold and silver comes from. Look it up. Plutos. Hmm? Oh no, it's a whole, it's a different etymology. Because there is a, uh, in the Greek, it's not sounding like that at all. No. Uh, yeah, I don't mean paradise. Like, uh, okay. Uh, but strangely, the Greek concept of heaven did not have a god or goddesses who personified its rarefied realms. The ruler of Elysium varies from author to author in Greek history. So they had Elysian or the Elysian fields. Uh, is a conception of the afterlife that developed over time and was a tenet of some Greek religious and philosoph philosophical sects and cults. That's where it comes from. Because it wasn't, the prophets didn't write about that. Moses didn't speak of that. Adam, no one, no one was the flood, nothing, nothing was mentioned about 
this heaven and hell business. Some spoke about debate about philosophers, by philosophers, you know what I mean? Like, they're always asking all these deep questions, right? So they always put out cool ideas, theories about what happens to the soul after it dies. You know, different things people ask today, isn't it? But they become bigger and, you know, part of a cult, as it borrows reading, right? So these became, these things, these ideas became popular in the ideology and embedded in, as you know, the Greek mythology. Yeah. Oh yeah, go on. I just wanted to read that. That's where it comes from. It's just Greek um, 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 philosophy, man. As we've seen, it's not in the scriptures. The book of Matthew again, nineteen and, and twenty-eight. And Yahweh shall say unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration. Oh shit, Salakias. I just see some uh, some answer, even the so-called Jews. Um, someone asked about do Jews believe in heaven and hell? And this guy said, My Hebrew school days are failing me. Help. He asked about Jews believing in heaven and hell. And I said, No, I don't think we do. That generally a Christian concept, especially the devil. What else should so the, so even because they suppose they believe in the it's not a concept which is found in the law and the prophets. It's just not there. Which is a big problem, because why wouldn't it be? It's something that they misinterpret from certain writings in the New Testament. And that's all it is. It's a, mis it's, there, it's a cunningly devised fable that they've, they've feigned and incorporated into the Christian doctrine, but it has no basis in the scriptures, really. Because if it was there, it would have been there from the beginning. And thoroughly explained and fleshed out. Not part of the biblical narrative. Yeah, yeah, you can't hear it. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 16 says, For we have not borrowed cunningly devised fables, which we made, which when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach, but were eyewitness of his majesty. One guy said in Judaism, they says there is a concept of the world to come. Israel shall be saved to the everlasting, to everlasting salvation, a world of our end, which for us would represent an age. Yeah? It says, but not heaven and hell like the Christian concepts. Generally, fear of a bad afterlife is not a dominant motivator in Judaism like it is in many Christian denominations. That whole dying and going to hell thing is a, is a Christian, they made that up recently. And adopted it from, from Greek mythology. That's what I'm trying to that's what I'm trying to say. And it's obvious. It's a, yeah, go on, bring it up. Second Timothy chapter four, verse three. So for the time will come where they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they beat to themselves teachers having itching ears. We see it's like new. That's what these black unconscious niggas are about. They hear they like hearing new things, right? And like running this shit. It's the same back then. They all like to hear things like Mars Hill. They always sit there and debate and, and talk about theories and this and that. People like to hear those things. It's, you know, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? But, <laughs> but it's not the truth. What? <laughs> but it's not the truth. You know? And people have incorporated these things in their belief systems, man. But they're just off, not correct. You know? They said, for the time will come where they will not enjoy sound doctrine, but after them, their own lust, they shall heap uh, to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall be they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables, man. And that's an example. This is an example of that. And this whole, uh, this whole I, uh, hell doctrine is nothing but a fable that was, you know, made popular and was believed on. And the church used it and made people fear it and you still be scared about it and all this kind of stuff. And that the whole world, you know, duped, you know? Yeah, so in Egyptian, they has the Egyptian afterlife. They had the, the... It is possible to have a heart that is lighter than a feather. To the ancient Egyptians, it was not only possible, but highly desirable. The afterlife, see? The afterlife of the ancient Egyptians was known as the field of reeds, a land just like what one knew, save that there was no sickness, no disappointment, and of course, no death. One lived eternally by the streams and beneath the trees, which one had loved so well, one's life on earth. And, and then they got pictures of that stuff in tombs. Right, but then your heart had to be as light as a feather to get in there. 
Otherwise, you would go to what's known as Juat, which is which is hell. This is this stuff is just all Egyptian and Greek mythology, man. You know, it's all bullshit. It's that's Moses and they never talked about none of that. Never talked about that. They told it's the real shit that happened on Earth, man. Okay, real shit. <laughs> Um, where was we? Yeah, let's just finish up on that and then we'll close up. We went round the houses to get to this point, but it's just like, look, man, we've got to start looking at the Bible as a whole narrative. Once you look at the whole narrative, it'll make sense. The problem with Christianity is it's like a, a whole new narrative that's been produced that doesn't fit with the rest of the story. It just doesn't fit, man. It was never Moses. To, oh, yeah, the, the goal is to go to heaven. No, never, 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 ever. What is you talking about? Even Cartel said, like, them man, them man want you to um, die and go to heaven. You first. <laughs> there you go, man. So, go with Matthew uh, 19 and 20. Finish on 28. And the hour shall say unto them, Very I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the, the twelve tribes of Israel. Now we know that's a physical place because even in New Jerusalem, they're going to have gates with their names on them. And we know that in Isaiah, the second chapter, it speaks about that time when Israel is going to be ruling over the nation. So it's not a mythical thing. It's something, an event that's going to happen on earth, just like every other prophecy which is written in the Bible. There's not one prophecy in the Bible of something that's going to happen anywhere else other than earth. The setting of the story is earth. It's not in fucking Pleiades or whatever. <laughs> the Milky Way or Star Wars or something. It's all on earth. Name, the, Show me the prophecy that doesn't happen on earth in the Bible concerning people. Please show me the one. All on earth. Something that happens to you physically. Going into slavery. Coming out of slavery. Ruling. Being ruled all over. Dying. Starving. Being fed. <laughs> what are we talking about here? Come on. Christianity, you need to behave yourself. Uh, and everyone that has followed, I mean, have forsaken houses. Or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands. These are all things that you can find where? On earth. Yeah. And, and to forsake them in this world, you mean in this era? Yep. No, in this. Yeah. For my name, I mean, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. You compensate it, man. That's an everlasting life, and you're gonna have to live where on that land? So, so this is where we have the disconnect. So then now, when you start talking about salvation, that's why these Christians are so confused because their idea of salvation is tied with living and dying only and avoiding hell or going to heaven. Where our our salvation does include living and dying, but is a lot more nuanced on that. It's really the curses, which the curses include death. The salvation that the Bible speaks of is salvation from the curse of the law. Now, with that comes salvation from slavery and all these things, because all of that comes from the curse of the law. It said that Yahweh Shai have redeemed us from the curse of the law by being made a curse for us. Once you understand that, then you know well salvation ain't gonna include them. Because they're not under the curse of the law. It was all about delivering us from the curse so that we could receive the blessings. Where are we gonna be blessed? On the earth, as it was always intended. Why do you think he said to Abraham, your children are gonna inherit that land? It wasn't, oh, Abraham, your seed are gonna live in the fucking sky, in the heaven. No, they're gonna live in the land. And be rulers and be kings over the earth and the people. Awesome. 
Yeah, any more in scriptures and we'll, and we'll close up. Daniel uh, 7 and the... And yeah, that's why Volcab and these dudes, they need to stay away from us, man. Because we'll tear them apart. And that's why they don't want us to start going into the Old Testament. Because once you start going in, they could kind of, or they might pull a little lake of fire and a few scriptures from the New Testament that they butcher because they don't understand. But that's where you get the word context. you got to understand the Bible with context. You can't just selectively pick that part without using the rest of the Bible to understand it. And that's what Christianity does, so that they can use Lake of Fire to now start talking about Hades and all this stuff. Like, no. They rely on the ignorance of Christians, man. Do not know when. No, we're not going to do that. It doesn't make no sense if heaven and hell, if it's all about heaven and hell, it doesn't make no sense that Isaiah, Jeremiah, none of the prophets spoke about it. But then, Paul and all them were constantly quoting them. And Yahweh said he came to fulfill those things. Now you're trying to say he's going to fulfill something that wasn't written. Well, that don't make no sense. This, this scripture says he came to fulfill all things which are written of him in the book of Moses and the law and the prophets. So where did this heaven and hell thing come from? And so then are we abandoning the whole thing about being in the land now? How yeah. can the two things be together? Are we not trying to obtain a throne? We're so, not trying to receive crowns? So now they have to have a thing called, well, oh, there's going to be a millennial kingdom for a thousand years. And then, no, because the scripture says it's an everlasting kingdom. So it's not going to be temporary. They have to come up with all these goofy ways to try and fit their doctrine. No, just throw it away. It doesn't fit. And just stick with what the scriptures say. And that's why Volkov don't want to deal with, with the eschatology because he knows that once, if you start digging into Christian eschatology, it's a bag of confusion and none of it makes sense. Because you can't fit what the scriptures say concerning Israel and the kingdom and the, in with Christianity and going to heaven. and It doesn't all fit together. Because then you're like, well, when did that happen? And, when did it, and is there two different rewards? And Like, where is the kingdom of heaven? Is it on earth? Or is it, what's, what's it? Yeah, what's happening with this dude? It all becomes a confusion. That's why he says, I don't want to deal with the eschatology. Because he knows Christian eschatology is wacky and it's goofy and it doesn't make no sense. And then when you start going into the prophecies, it gets even worse because it's like it wasn't even mentioned. Then you got to start doing magic tricks. <laughs> hey, man. That's why you don't want to deal with us. And uh, Elder Apostle Taha says, if you want to you want to mess them around and mess them up, go into the prophecy twist them all the way around Israel shall be saved with everlasting salvation and when is that going to happen what does that mean that before or after the Lord comes back? <laughs> I don't want to deal with that yeah, you bet you don't just just uh, pay your tithes and go to heaven oh, this should be a book club just rest. Yeah, yeah Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> That's it. Uh, Daniel, I mean, uh, 7 and 13. I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man uh, came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days, and they brought him near before him, and there was given him dominion and the glory and the kingdom that all people nations and language should serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that shall not be destroyed that's going to be on earth and we're going to be joined heirs and that's why the scripture says the saint shall take the kingdom possess it forever and ever and ever Another thing we're going to possess is the land. So, Lord, will I know we, you know, we went, but hopefully you get the point, the gist of what we're trying to show. And then, so you do it. Go into the scriptures and try and find. And then, so now you can challenge these people. Oh, what did you just say? You said something about, you know, we're supposed to be going to heaven. Or, or go into hell. People are going to be going to hell. Well, can, can you show me where, where, where Moses spoke about that? 
And what if he didn't? Why didn't he speak about it? No. Gonna close up in a minute. Anyway, we're gonna close up on that. And Lord willing, you've been edified, man. So we say, Kal Halal Yahweh, Hashem Yahweh Shai, Wahala Kadash, and double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And honestly, brothers out there in the highways and the byways, teaching this word in us and so. Amen.